Hello and welcome to the 55th Planet Destiny podcast. We have had a lot of stuff happen in the past week, but before we get into all of that, hello to, to M. Tash, Michael Tash, for, uh, for coming back. Hello. You and I had some fun times on the Red Bull Clash course. We will talk about that a little bit later. And first time guest, hopefully not the last, hello, Paul Tassi. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing pretty good over here. For those of you who don't know, uh, give us a quick introduction of what you do and why this person looks older than Imtash is on the uh, Planet <laughs> Destiny podcast. But remarkably <laughs> similar. I, 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 I've, I, know. I bet you they're related in some way, to be honest. It's possible, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a writer for Forbes. I write about video games there full time, and I write about Destiny a lot, so that's probably why I'm here. <laughs> awesome. And, um, mm -hmm. Paul, you were, you've been writing about it, and... Um, sort of the point where we're at in Destiny right now. And some of the things that you talked about in your most recent article um, were interesting to me. You referenced the Kotaku article. And I, I don't make a point of referencing Kotaku very often, but um, some of their speculations over the past have come true and um, it adds some legitimacy to their writing. And you added a piece of that to an article you wrote where you kind of talked about um, Destiny as a whole and where it's going and some of the outrage that happened with the community last week. Now we're seeing, you know, some pretty significant changes at Bungie and um, from the top to also the way that they communicate to us and with us, I should say with us. I think we feel like some very significant changes have happened in the last week, but I, I just wanted to hear um, kind of your thoughts and um, about some of this last week and last two weeks, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, for being like kind of a downtime with the game, so much has happened this week. Like, I just I can't stop writing about it because it's something new every you know day and a half. Something seems to come up, and it's. I think it all kind of stems from this kind of communication problem um, where either people feel like they're being misled or they don't feel like they're being told kind of the full story about whatever's going on. Um, and we've seen that kind of split for two significant ways. Um, there's the PvP thing where Bungie just straight up didn't say that they were changing uh, matchmaking and it screwed it all up and everyone was like, what the hell's going on? And then it turned out they changed something without telling us. And then after that, it's kind of been, well, what comes next? And why aren't we hearing about kind of anything that comes next? And right as people were wondering that, it happened where Bungie was giving the weekly update and we got a new Valentine's Day event, which is kind of expected. I don't think people were expecting some huge DLC announcement for like three weeks from now. Um, but then that came also in the wake of the Kotaku article, which alleges that Destiny 2 or something approximating Destiny 2 is supposed to come out this fall. And now because of kind of some scrambling, that's been delayed somewhere to spring next year or something like that. Um, and well, over the past week, I think we've seen Bungie really step up communication, like giving a lot more updates, especially about PvP stuff. Like every other day, they're kind of telling exactly what they're doing. Um, we're still kind of ultimately left with this question of, well, what's next? Oh, we have our like vague kind of inside source rumors about maybe there was a sequel coming this fall, maybe it got delayed, but outside of the Valentine's Day thing, no one really kind of has any idea what's actually coming next for the game. Mm -hmm. We're in a position where we're seeing some changes happen at Bungie that we're not gonna um, we're not gonna see the fruit of that labor for some time. And um, you know, I think we look at uh, front and center the uh, CEO uh, being changed. That that was announced just yesterday. Right. Yeah, uh, it was yesterday. Yeah. Well. Pete yeah. Parsons, right? It's a major change. And uh, yeah, that's I don't, a big change. Well, I don't. I mean, I, I I have some insight into that, and I I don't think that. I mean, I think Patrick and I talked about this earlier. I don't think that, and it's been a conversation that's been going around in the community. Um, I don't think what happened over the last week or so is why, you know, Harold Ryan either stepped down or was let go. We don't know. I don't. I don't want to make assumptions over that. I don't think that that's the way companies like this work. I think that um, we definitely influence the way that Bungie is communicating with us now, as in like the weekly updates and things like that, something more visceral. Some of the stuff that we're going to see that will influence Destiny 2 is not going to happen for some time. 
I mean, do you guys agree? Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's takes I mean, it's, yeah. incredible. It's not like they're just stuff. instantly going to make new DLC because they have a new CEO. Yeah. And like, <laughs> nor was it the case that okay, we done Destiny had a really bad week or people were upset. Like, let's change the CEO. Like, <laughs> I mean, this stuff is you know, yeah, we've all heard stories about the development of Destiny, like how kind of rocky that was. Like, you know, they're ripping out the story. You're ahead of launch. Like, I think there's been some pretty significant structural problems within the company for one reason or another for. A really long time now, and like, yeah, things have gotten bad lately. But I, I mean, I definitely don't think it's just in result to like community unrest for the past like two weeks or whatever that they'd make a decision this big. But no, the rumor definitely. has been pretty recent that Destiny Two has gotten delayed, though. Right. Do you yeah, guys think true. it could be associated to that? To that rumor? I think if you're looking at um, where the buck stops for being able to push content out on a timely basis, I think that that does. That is the responsibility of the head of the company. So mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. as significant of that as that could have been the straw that broke the camel's back. I think that you know you look at sort of, you know, I don't I don't know enough about the the the, and we're making assumptions that he was removed, and that's not even we don't know that, right? Yeah, he may seems likely him, though. I mean, yeah, I know, usually but. when people retire, the they write a letter. When people get fired, the next CEO writes a letter, right? Is it? commonly what you would perceive as being the truth yeah but i mean yeah, I mean, it's not 100 percent. we heard much from them beforehand anyway generally but yeah i think that's a pretty general rule <laughs> yeah that for, for everything pretty much in regards to ceos changing hands well mm -hmm. i think that one of the things that we're looking at is um a new culture you know, every CEO, no matter what it, the reason for the previous CEO losing, leaving, right? No matter what it is, anytime you have a new CEO, you have a, um, they come in with their own sort of culture, right? And um, mm -hmm. I'm, to be honest with you, I am very optimistic for what's, what Pete brings with him, Pete Parsons. Um, I've, I've been fortunate enough to play with him quite a bit on Destiny. And that guy is like, um, he's a legit gamer, you know. Like he is a, he is a gamer, and he plays uh, he plays the game a lot. And um, I'm really excited about it. I don't know if you guys have you guys heard anything, or do you have any like views on it? I, I met it's... him. And he's, he was a really nice guy, and he seemed really hooked into the community. And like he told me, he read my articles, and I was like, whoa, like that's <laughs> really cool. That's awesome. Um, but I mean, yeah, just outside of brief contact. But he seems like a nice dude, and I am, I'm also pretty hopeful about it. So I think it'll be cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to ask you, when uh, Forbes started covering Destiny, it was kind of a surprise to, I think, the Destiny community, right? <laughs> is that, you know, like, why is Forbes so into Destiny? Why, why are you guys covering Destiny so much? So I, I want to ask you, is it because of just personal interest that you, that you see so much news in Destiny, you report on it? Or is it just that the Destiny news is so juicy that it, it makes for good articles? Uh, I mean, it's a bit of both. Like, when Destiny first came out, I was just going to cover it like any other big release. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's a new big title, so I wrote about the the alpha and the beta. And, but like, there was something about the game where I, I never ran out of article ideas for it. So, like, <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I'm going to wait two days, then I'll write another Destiny article. And just two days and two days and a week and a week, and I've I've never run out of articles because it's ended up being the game I've played more in the last year and a half than any other game. And I, I'm imagining that's true for a lot of people listening. And I've, I've been covering other games too, but since Destiny is kind of this ongoing experience where, at least previously, there were new content drops every three months, and like between those drops, there was some sort of drama always happening, patches or internal community stuff. There's always something to write about, and it's always very interesting to a very large group of people, so it makes it kind of the ideal game to keep coming back to. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if, if I'm still playing it, there's always, you know, stuff to talk about. So that's kind of why it's been this eternal well of, <laughs> um, you know, content, because there's always people there to read it. And, you know, you can write two words and there'll be like 10,000 people showing up to discuss <laughs> it, because it's just, that's how much people care about it. <laughs> but Destiny's yeah. dead. Right, <laughs> yeah, Destiny's um, Destiny. hibernating. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> that's probably a probably a best word. Yeah, <laughs> it's in a coma. I, it's something. I don't so, know. Something so like transforming. I guess we need to ask you. Um, you main a. You don't main a warlock, do you? You main a titan, right? You seem like a titan guy. Um. Yeah, I main a warlock. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> Sorry, I do have a tight. I have a Titan and a Hunter. I started off maining Hunter on PS4, and then I switched to Xbox One, and now I main a Warlock. But Sunbreaker made me play my Titan a ton, so I've. Sunk Unless a lot you're of one of those guys. You spec a firebolt like grenade, right? You use all that, right? Yep, yep. What's your grenade? E easy bake nades. Mm -hmm. Easy bake. Oh yeah, easy bake. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. All right. Well, um, I, I, I guess um, what what we really wanted to know is like you. I mean, some of some of what I wanted to know is how you got into and kind of like along Breyer's um, questions. Um, how did you get into journalism and specifically writing about game journalism and that kind of the career path that you took? Yeah, it's kind of this weird like very bizarre butterfly effect thing. So like back in college, I worked for my school paper. I was the film editor there. Um, got an email about this college blog network that was starting up out in New York. Um, they wanted me to write a blog about you know campus life at my school. Did that for a year. They hired me full time out of that um, after I graduated. And then I started my own site when I was out in New York. Um, that got me noticed by a different startup called True Slant. Um, and they said, you can just pick a topic and write about it. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna write about gaming because it's like, you know, burgeoning industry. I, you know, I play games all the time. Like that's what I pick. So I wrote there for a little while, and then uh, Forbes came calling, and they bought True Slant, the <laughs> whole platform, um, just like start to finish. And they, I mean, they laid off a ton of the writers, and I'm like, oh well, that was fun. <laughs> uh, you know, see ya. But um, they decided to keep a couple people on, and I was one of the lucky ones who made the cut. And they just they wanted me to keep. Um, writing about games for Forbes and so I started writing and I was mostly focused on like the business side of things because it was Forbes but there's so much to cover in gaming I finally just got broader and broader permissions to just pretty much cover it like a normal gaming outlet would with reviews and they added you know um, there's other people on our staff like uh, Eric Kane, Dave Thier, Jason Evangelo we have a whole kind of group of five or six of us now that do this um, a couple of us are doing it like full full time and then there's other contributors here and there that don't write as much but and the editors like it because gaming is a really hot topic. Our stuff does seems to really do well with you know kind of the general communities, and you know we take a lot of crap too. But that's kind of <laughs> every or the, every or gaming outlet takes some amount of crap at some point. Is so. there any crossover between like other articles on Forbes? Like I'm sure you have like metrics that measure like you know where does somebody go after they click on like a Destiny article. Mm -hmm. Do they Usually ever go to like a, how to curb an addiction? Yeah, they go to the gaming version of AA. <laughs> yeah, yeah like sure. is there any crossover between like Forbes as a whole and then gaming Forbes? Um, sometimes. I mean, some of the the tech stuff there's kind of crossover. Like the tech tech is kind of the biggest area of Forbes right now. So people will go and they'll talk about you know they'll, they'll dive into a lot of the gaming stuff um, and they can spend a fair amount of time there because you know we have a lot going up pretty much every day about all sorts of gaming but there's some crossover with general tech probably not they don't jump from destiny into like you know the big financial stuff it's not how to that manage kind of crossover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how to manage your 401k <laughs> uh, how to manage your glimmer slash 401k you know well i, I write about yes, the destiny the economy sometimes so that's where i'm using my my economics degree from school and my my forbes platforms so that's sort of <laughs> economics related <laughs> interesting yeah well we've got a um i was hoping that we were gonna get a weekly update that's what I was yeah. banking on. Yeah. I was banking Imagine on us it. getting a weekly update and kind of talking with Paul and including him with the uh, conversation about it. I think that some of the community, I guess we can talk about the lack of a weekly update. Oh, we, I mean, to be, to be completely well, fair, the, there, it wasn't a weekly update, but there were, what, three separate uh, things that Bungie has posted since you know last week or, or two about matchmaking, right? Yeah, just like about about the matchmaking. Like, yeah. what what do you think about you know Bungie's increased communication right now? They said there's a huge problem that we or they said they're they're aware that we have a huge problem about the matchmaking. Mm -hmm. They said they're getting data for it on Tuesday, having a new matchmaking happen on Wednesday, collecting data on that, and then further said, okay, we listened. Uh, there's there's great data coming out of it, and now we're further adjusting it for today. I haven't even had a chance to try the Iron Band. We fired today. the guy in charge. They fired the guy <laughs> up ahead. They said, <laughs> listen, so you're out. <laughs> Apparently, you suck at netcode because that's what you're hired. That's what CEOs do is write netcode. As far as I know. And, as far as I know, right? <laughs> and now we have a new CEO apparently writing better netcode. Fingers crossed, right? 
it, it doesn't seem as bad of a drought when they're at least talking to us. It can be as minuscule yes. as saying, hey, here's this, here's this you know, thing that we did because you know, PvP lag has been so shitty. Uh, mm-hmm. we're, we're making steps to improve it, and then they're you know, talking to us about it. That's, it, it makes the you know, lack of it just a little Should- bit more bearable. Just sheer acknowledgement goes mm-hmm. a long, long way. And for a while, it's felt a little bit like Bungie hasn't really said, wait, what lag? You know, or like, wait, there's connection problems? And this is, this is honestly the first time that I feel like they're going, okay, we get it. The connections really suck. We need to fix this. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's yeah, the I first mean, time I've heard that from them. The, the stuff they can communicate, they need to communicate. So, like, they can communicate the stuff they're doing behind the scenes to fix lag. Like, that's pretty basic stuff. Where, mm-hmm. where you kind of yeah. run into trouble then is, like, they're not really going to just start come out and be like, okay, well, we're maybe thinking about this PvP thing, but it may get delayed. So we may do this other, you know, PvE thing, and that may get delayed. So, like, the actual content, I think they're going to have a harder time communicating because the stuff they can communicate is more kind of day-to-day on the ground stuff, but we're still waiting for kind of any sort of roadmap, which I think is the next big kind of hurdle they have to overcome. Mm-hmm. You know, we yeah. got a we got a small roadmap from Irk, right? It was more of like a compass heading. This was the pre-Christmas little addition yeah, to the weekly so update that he, he did. They, yeah. He gave like a little. That was a compass heading. What's a roadmap look like? What what needs to be, what needs to be present for it to be a roadmap? Because how many DLCs are we getting this year? Are they gonna are are they gonna cost us money? Are they paid for by Eververse? Is there gonna be a Destiny two in <laughs> September? Wait, wait, slow down. I'm writing these down. There's a raid. There's a raid, There's a raid included oh, in any right. of that. So, so is it either? But we're gonna, buying all the emotes. And are you going to buy emotes? Is that going to pay for it, or are we going? to... I have bought the emotes. Right. So, <laughs> is that? Paid, is it already expansion. been paid for? Has it been? paid Yeah, that's for? what I want to know. Okay. No, I, I don't think there's any way they're not going to charge for new DLC. Yeah. Because as much as nice as that would be, I can't see that happening. But maybe. <laughs> uh, Paul, you you put out an article about. Um, what Destiny needs now is uh, an expansion that was released uh, uh, released in Skyrim. The Hearthfire thing. Yeah. Hearthfire thing. Um, do you think like this current lineup of the way that they're putting out content can it sustain the game, or do, or do they need to shift it instead of like events that only last for a week to more of that style content? Which, by the way, if you guys haven't read that article please go do yeah it's tricky because i don't think they can sustain themselves with just these kind of week-long two week-long events because the reason everyone got hooked on destiny so much is because the schedule for year one was i mean it's pretty fantastic like you mm-hmm. you know you had the vanilla game you had two dlcs and you had another big dlc and you never went more than like four four and a half five months without content but now we're up like approaching six months no content no announcements of content even and if that's the way year one went, I don't think the game would have assembled the kind of player base it has. So Agreed. I think I understand that year one is kind of impossible. Like they, I think they bit off more they can chew. And I understand that people were like killing themselves to make that schedule happen. And I would not wish that on anybody. But I think there's got to be some sort of like kind of happy medium here where if you're not doing that exact schedule and you're not pumping out a full sequel or whatever every two years, like some sort of consistent schedule where, okay, Big release, like medium release, like even if it's every six months or something, or or just five months, like something that's more consistent but at least more doable, but something where people know like what to expect rather than now we have this kind of yawning expanse of time where what's the next thing we get? I don't know. Is it Sparrow Racing? Is it a sequel? Like <laughs> that's that's such a wide range where we just we don't know. And I think that's that's priority one is just kind of figuring out at least the very next thing. Like you, you, you made the list of stuff of like all the stuff we want to know. I would take them just announcing the one thing that's coming next, like and when that is and what type of thing that is. I think that would kind of placate a big portion of the community, even if it was just that. But that would it would well, give everybody a something to look forward to, like a a carrot on a stick. You know, even <laughs> if I'm bored with the Crucible right now, you know, I want to keep my skills sharp because new stuff's coming. Right. The caveat though is that they have said. That a major update to the sandbox and a uh, an expansion that is well not expansion but an update that is bigger than Festival of Lost but smaller than the Taken King is coming in the spring and they have said that. And That's such a broad range. It's like yeah, what it really what does that mean? <laughs> like this, this is what we need. Right, but but at the same on. time, knowing that That's Destiny helped. Two comes in September it would be also broad as well. It'd be like, what does Destiny Two involve? What is it? Are our characters transferred? Is it like is it like a whole new game? Is it 
basically a big expansion. You know, like that. Like there's there's levels of it that I don't know. It, like it, any way that they do it, they're gonna have a problem with the community. I think I think Destiny is gonna be a problem no matter what because. If it's a full sequel, like, do, I mean, do you guys really think that they're going to come out with a full sequel that's like four zones, like four new zones, three new classes, like something that's the same scale of the original? Because that, to me, like with the current kind of problems with content development, that doesn't seem doable at this point, even if it is delayed to the spring. Like, so if they deliver something less than that, that's going to kind of like <laughs> upset everyone, but it might not be realistic to think Destiny 2 is going to be literally vanilla all, content just all of what end. destiny one was and more right yeah like is that possible i don't know that seems like a stretch well, let's, to let's me. take a let's how how long was destiny in development it was like four years at the end of yeah. reach right so, i think it was longer than four years well i mean the we we know like the original concept stuff started around the time that like reach was being developed as well so i guess that's not so, a fair met- matrix, it, matrix it, we, we don't they, they had to yeah, start we don't really they know. had to create lore they had to create like the whole there's a lot more so i guess the that's game not engine exactly. they had to create so the creation let's, tools let's say yeah, they creation started tools were a big problem too yes um, mtash there's uh in odst there was an easter egg with some posters mm-hmm. um, that have references to destiny as well and, and odst came up before reach yeah. not not too too much before like maybe a year before I'd, I'd have to Google the yeah, date. Yeah, it was like an expansion. So like it's like it's been around for a while. I remember I was I was going to um, I was going to Mexico. I was in Mexico with my buddies and my one friend. He was talking about this new game that was coming out, and it was like two years before Destiny even came out. So like, I mean, they've they've had some development time. Yeah. So we've got we've but, got a pro- but they also had to they they had to like make the tools, and now that they've mm-hmm. said that the tools are getting better. Mm-hmm. It's it's feasible to think that they can actually do vanilla Destiny in half the time with the lore already created and the tools already in and, place, and they have more people working on it, and more people, yeah, yeah and a track right. record that says this is definitely going to work. They might be improving the tools and improving the engine, but they're not starting from scratch with all that stuff. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> if we have like a slightly smaller than a vanilla, but live team is able to, you know create these smaller weekly events that come out at a greater frequency I, th- I think that would be that would be okay as well maybe I don't know I'm just, I'm just I mean I was saying the other day I wouldn't I personally wouldn't even mind if there just weren't sequels for this game and if we got mm-hmm. taken King style expansions regularly like I don't I don't need something that's called destiny 2 and I don't know how viable that is in this model um, I don't know, maybe you guys talked this before but like it just that that seems to put like such a hard limit on the type of content that a sequel is supposed to contain. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. if you you give people any less than four zones and three classes and like twenty missions and eight strikes or whatever it was, new launch, they're going to be yeah. like, how 50, is the sixty dollars? Fifty new exotics. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I think they're kind of between a rock and a hard place there. But I, I mean, I personally would not mind if we never saw a game actually called Destiny Two, so long as just substantive content was being put out on a regular what, basis. What's what kind of uh, what size of a studio would you need? I mean, how does Patrick? I'm sorry to actually drag <laughs> this out of you, but what kind? Oh of... Oh boy, let's wow. go. All right. Wow. So a wow it question. Is. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's fine. So. Their schedule is very effective to maintain mm-hmm. a community that's very large. What, what, what do you know? I mean, what, do we venture to guess what kind of staffing they have? And I mean, hell of a lot bigger than Bungie. A hell of a lot, right? Oh, I mean, plus, plus, you're also dealing with a guaranteed monetary like uh, money coming in every single month. It costs fifteen bucks a month to play WoW, and even if you have only. I think I don't remember what the last numbers were, but like, just say six million people. Yeah, play, that's, it's you know? a it's still huge. It's, it's a like huge amount six, of money. Seven, Plus, there's million. all the, all this other stuff that you can spend money on in the game. Um, you know, they're they're fine the as far as funding too, anything right? goes. Yeah, the the expansion will cost the expansions cost money, but then after that, um, it just costs the month to to pay to play the game. It costs the month to play the game, and then. That's you know, that's pretty much it. You're getting a very steady stream of content. There's monthly, weekly, daily events coming in in that game. There's uh, I think it's about every four months or so, about about every four months. There is a new raid added with usually some new uh, dungeons to go do, and, and yeah, I mean argue... a new raid means a very you know a sounds much awesome. more playability because then you <laughs> have to get your gear up to that level as well. It's just well, I'm gonna argue that. Making a first-person shooter 
is is mm-hmm. harder than making wow yeah i mean a mm-hmm. top-down kind of cartoony looking thing i mean <laughs> there's more, there's more i'm not i'm not process. stepping foot in this part of the conversation all right <laughs> no, the, I, the detail I, 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 have I, to be, I am more ta- i'm a complete i'm talking from a com- place of complete ignorance here i and i'm gonna admit it yes <laughs> thank you the character the person's perception of what's happening in front of them the visual element of it it's got to be more specific like finer tuned m- movements and stuff like that that will disorient the player and that stuff becomes much more visible it's- I mean, it's I'm just difficult just... in different ways. I mean, if we're talking about just purely map design, as someone who has designed maps for both types of games, first-person shooter does take a lot more attention to detail. You have to think about how um, an individual player moves throughout the map. If we're talking about an MMO-type thing, you're thinking more along the lines of where are groups being placed throughout the map. It's, it, it, it's different, different strokes different strokes here mm-hmm. but but you know whereas more attention is placed on detail in first person shooter because you know there's more general detail there and more emphasis to the environment yeah i mean the only thing I'm, I'm not a big mmo person myself but i i do think the only thing you can really kind of compare the destiny community and the community's expectations to is other mmos um because and it's it's different because we've, the community's never really seen something like this on a console before so i think this mm-hmm. is kind of a lot of people's first experience with mmo type content, even if it's packaged as like a first person shooter that feels like Halo. And I think that's kind of been kind of a weird expectation game, both with fans and with Bungie themselves. Like Bungie has repeatedly said, like, we didn't really even quite know what this thing was we were doing. We just knew it was fun and cool and we wanted to do it. And they've kind of, they're learning that as they go. But the problem is, and this is the kind of the thing I've argued, is people, people like the game so much that they just want more of it all the time. And but the problem mm-hmm. is you have one game like, you know, you have a Call of Duty game. They're now on like a three year development cycle for each new game and they make a couple map packs and then they get to release every year because there's three studios. But a game like Destiny, it's it's almost entirely just Bungie working on it. And they have to be cranking out these DLCs and these major expansions and allegedly these sequels. And it just it seems like the potential of Destiny right now is kind of just physically too big. For what is actually possible like people would love just kind of the consistent level of content we i mean you guys remember at launch people thought the game was like tiny or like too small like and that was like vanilla content where we've never even seen a, a release as big as that since then and yeah. i think people always want more and more and more from destiny and I, I don't blame them but it's just we're running into this wall of what's like physically possible to create at this point and those expectations don't really match up with the actual ability of the studio to do that as much as they might want to do that. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. and I, 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 yeah, I, I agree. And I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at the production cycle of what our expectations are and what we can look at. Would the question I have to you guys is, would you be happy if everything we saw from here on out and at what and the second part of that question was, okay, so there's two parts to this question. Would you be happy if everything we saw going forward was the size of the Taken King? And if so, what time frames would they have to be putting that kind of content out? If that's the only thing we saw between Festivals of the Lost and uh, Sparrow Racing League and you know Crimson Doubles sprinkled in between, and if we only saw the Taken King, would you be happy? And how how wide apart would or close together would those releases be? What kind of time frames are we looking at? I think that's an easy answer because we're starving right now. And about six months. <laughs> you think six? I think like every four to five. I, yeah, if, I'm, if they I'm had, with Fassi, I think four months. Six, yeah. six the tail end. Six the tail end. If they had, you a think Taken they could King do a Taken King size thing every four months. If they had a drop oh, right now with the raid, I don't <laughs> think I, I don't think Briar like has to. He's the guy that goes to the, the 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 store and goes, "Look, I'm the customer. I don't have to be realistic." <laughs> no, I mean honestly, I just like, want you, what I asking. want and I want it now. I can see your argument, definitely. Like the three to four months, like everyone at this point, it's been three to four months in September. You know, everyone's ready to go. But at the same time, like, how long was the diff- distance between House of Wolves and Taken King? And and like they're probably developing 
taking King before or like during the same cycle as House of Wolves. So like that could have been a six to eight to nine or that longer. That was a short wait. House of Wolves no, to Taken right. King was short. It was just the summer. Right. Was, but there's probably so development time before House of that. Wolves even. was a long time. Yeah. And I think what added to the delay of to uh, Taken King was they made significant changes to the way that story was told. They made right. significant True. changes yeah. to things in in like they were building that plane as it was flying. And um, I right. think they had already started developing it, but then realized that they needed to make some significant content changes. And I'm not just talking about kicking out Dinklebot. I'm talking about the way that they told the story. And so yeah, that, right. that had to have added production time to Taken King. You know, every well, time also, they release the DLC, they have to rethink the economy. They have to rethink yeah. how... Uh, vendor weapons are going to work. They have to rethink so many different things. At some point, this stuff is going to normalize, right? It's going to stay the same. They're going to figure out a way to make this economy work so that they don't have to re, you know, remake it the in, every, with every I, DLC. I actually and think at some point, I think that now. these things are going to get easier for them to make. As their studio grows, as they get better at doing this, as their creation tools get refined over time, as their engine gets refined, I think they will be able to create this content at a high quality, at a faster pace. All right. So, so also, see, I think I oh, think the actually the economy right now is where it should be, and what they've been trying to get to, because they went through ascendant energy in the first one with the raids, then radiant energy, and then etheric light for upgrading to get high light level, mm -hmm. and then they threw all that completely away for modes of light and legendary marks for infusement right. for that, and that that process right there, figuring that out while the game was live, definitely easily took up a lot of man hours. Do you think infusion is like the end game for the economy? Do you think that'll just stick from here on out? I mean, it works. I think it's working. like I think it works. Yeah, I think it's a great like it's a great way to want gear and potentially get gear that's better that you can then put into gear that you already like. I think it's a good way. I would like to see transmog happening for blues. To be honest with you, I've I seen mean, just for for gear in general, being able mm -hmm. to make your gear look like any other piece of gear. That well, I, 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 I'm, I, I, that's where you and I differ on that, Patrick, because I, 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 I think that there should be some... Not exotics, of, not exotics. Well, I think there should but, be some, like, fascination with finding that perfect role of whatever, whatever. Um, but for, 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 for gear, and but I really would like to see some of the blue stuff turn purple, right? Being able to up... If you significantly like a, a white item, and it may cost you a lot... But you should be able to bring that up, and it brings the diversity. Um, you sh it should it, it should bring the diversity into the game. I don't know. And never sure? forgot that cost off. I want that the cost off. I want <laughs> and, I, and, and if I, up, if, I up, if I upgrade that cost off, Kvostov, I do not want that broken sight picture to to, to be fixed. No, I want of it course to not. That's yeah, part of the charm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, I think, like Call of Duty, you know, like with Tef <laughs> saying, you know, four or five months, I, I would love that. But even if they did have to delay to the six, to the seven month difference, throw something in there that people can have fun with in between. So, custom lobbies. Yeah. Um, a theater mode so that if someone wants to make mm. a funny machinima with their friends, they can go fucking film something in patrol. Mm. If you had that stuff from the very start, I think... Every, like this whole game would be in a different spot. There would be tournaments. Yeah. There would be at the X Games right now. There wouldn't be Halo. There would be Destiny, and people would be so hyped up about it. If you look at the chart that they posted on in one of the the updates, like in the last few days, they posted a chart where people were playing games, and there was like eight hundred thousand or nine hundred thousand people doing strikes, which is shocking to me. I didn't even realize that. Raids was like a hundred thousand, and then all of the rest was PVP activities, completely dominating it. And it's not even that people want to be super, super competitive. And they want to be the top 1%. And those you know, people are, are all going to go to the tournaments. But it's obvious that people do enjoy PvP. And if there were outlets for people to watch those cool big tournaments and, and you know, be impressed by these players that are dedicating hours to being the best, I think people would watch that stuff and keep them entertained with the game and interested in, and wishing, wow, I wish I could be that good. Or, you know, I wish, hopefully, maybe next expansion, I'll be that guy. You know, right. I think it, it would just add a whole new dynamic mm -hmm. to it. Let's say year three introduces custom game modes and private lobbies, right? Okay. And then maybe year four introduces some sort of vanilla version of Forge, 
right? Let's say they keep upping that community creation element every year as the engine gets more and more established. And they cut out 360, they cut out PS3, and now they're just de all, they're just developing for two consoles, right? Would, would, would that development power and everything going into community tools every three months or so we get a, you know, community type release? Would that satisfy Mr. Rabbit? No, no, they need more uh. PvE content in there somewhere. <laughs> they, it, yeah. The problem is they keep adding PvP, uh, not the right PvP in my opinion. I'm with MTash on this one. They need to get, they need to get custom matches and private lobbies into there. Like it's it's got to be like top on their list in my opinion, but they need PVE content as well. People play Destiny a lot because they like the PVE. People like to go in with their friends and shoot bad guys. It's well, give, a give fun us, thing to do. A, give us the, an equivalent version. So if custom lobbies and custom game modes is to PVP, what is that equivalent of a community event for PVE? Old bringing up old raids or making existing strikes harder. I think that's the PVE equivalent of that. I mean, because it, it can't just be public. When events? they create new new PVP comment, they most of that is just changing the rules of existing PVP games to to a certain extent. So that's a lot easier than them having to actually build new PVE content. So I think it would have to be something with bringing the old content up, like everyone keeps saying. Because um, I don't know if they could like realistically actually produce like is, I would love a strike builder that's the best idea I've ever heard uh, I don't know if that's actually That'd be possible freaking awesome. but yeah, they wouldn't would have really to good. they wouldn't have to give us the tools to create geometry just give us the tools to like place things inside already existing geometry existing maps I can see that mm -hmm. and then that save it even if you could change the rule set like if you could put on what burns you want and like limit yourself to certain things that would be pretty fun that if you could spawn create extra enemies or like if, if you could change like uh, like Sepix Prime is now Cabal Prime. Like, like there's Sepix Prime at the end, <laughs> but there's a bunch of Cabal Prime. enemies, and you put Solar Burn on and all that yes. stuff. Like it'd be it'd be cool you to do change Prison of up. Elders too. You could make your own Prison of Elders. So, I don't know. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> and that like that's an ex a, a great idea right there. Is there's four little separate rooms. Wipe those things. Make them make them the ability to add geometry in there. Just little yeah. things like little little mm -hmm. uh, trucks and vehicles and bridges, and you could make some pretty sick things in those little areas. Oh, I mean, they've already yeah. got a, a dedicated yeah, really section. If they just somehow wiped that and made it, you know, the forge, oh. you could turn, you could make PvP maps. You could make little little mission modes. Like, it, there's so much you could and do. Then you have endless replayability for PvE. Do you remember, right. uh, do you remember the, uh, I always, I, I think I've brought it up before. Do you remember the um, the jumping challenges like Stark, uh, or Sark? I uh, used to do the um, for Halo. It was the ultimate. The Warthog level. challenge. The, there was all these the, challenges the where you had to or do jump, all it. these, you know, like parkour type jumps and things like that. Um, imagine, you know, if you had those four rooms in custom mode, you could create a sequence where you would, if you, you know, the challenge for each room, and you would have to do all these parkour challenges and not die or whatever to get to the next room. And then when you got to the end, that was the challenge. I mean, the the the, the it's endless, it's endless. Yeah, I it mean, really oh my god, it's so cool. That's good. I'm gonna write an article about features as well. Prison of Elder Forge. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> having, uh, having the we'll, we'll give you that one for free. New well, you can have that, that one, Paul. Developed. All right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Top five new strikes by the community, uh, and also a uh, a playlist by Bungie that is featuring the top ones that could rotate every. I mean, that's true. It, they literally could have. A, yeah. a content creation thing that just self-perpetuates while us, they build new give content. Give us some of the, the burden. We will do it gladly and make the job easier. Well, I won't, just need the but tools. somebody will. <laughs> somebody, will. <laughs> somebody will, and they'll get featured on YouTube. I, I will also, stream you know. doing that stuff for hours. Oh, yeah. For oh, hours. yeah. It doesn't have to be complex. Give us a version, you know, give us a beta version with just a few different options in it. And you'll be amazed at what people do, I think. That's Make exactly it 2D. That. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, my, my feeling of it is that if they really do have to delay Destiny or a major expansion, something that is going to be a major chunk of content that we want to salivate over, then they need to give us some sort of tools like this. Either it's going to be custom games or custom private lobbies to begin with and or the very beginnings of some sort of user-created Forge world that, again, like you're saying, it could just be the game mode and putting on... Uh, putting on burns and all that initially. And then the next step of it is modify the spawn rate to the monsters. 
So you mm-hmm. can actually go in and tune the monster spawnings. So you can just be, like you said, a Cabal, Cabal Prime uh, type of strike. And then, obviously, the third iteration of it would be to modify geometry in those worlds. But they, I feel like if they're going to push this stuff back, they're going to have to figure out a way to give us a content creation tools of some extent. I'm not saying the full right, experience, but some extent to right. uh, allow us to keep playing the game. Briar, you ready? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this Sell time Briar. you get a you get a you get a uh, Taken King. Let's have it. Every six months, okay. <laughs> you get a PVE. At three months, you get a PVE type community. Um, type uh, uh, a release where you would maybe have some Prison of Elders custom modes, right? And then n- another three months in, you get the PvP custom modes, not like Forge mode, but you know, custom lobbies. So that's year three. A- any option that, I'm gonna buy into, right? No, no, no. I, I don't like want that answer. I want I want Consumer Briar telling me if he's gonna throw money at the screen or not. 100. percent I'm thinking about it. It's, it's not. It's not a. It's, God, you're <laughs> difficult, man. You know, like they set up expectations in year one of Destiny, right? It's right. not my. It's not my fault that they did that. They did that, not me. Right. So if they can't follow that up, that's again, it's not my fault. How and do they reset those, Briar? How do they reset those I think expectations? Because like they Paul gotta, was saying, they're gonna come out and say, "Hey, all right, we set the bar too high in year one. We're sorry. We can't sustain that. Here's what's gonna happen in year two and beyond, or year three and beyond." Yeah, year, I mean, year two has pretty much already reset that, like, by yeah. force. Like, I mean, yeah. expectations have been knocked down, I think, quite a bit already. And, like, I think they'll be pulled back up again a little bit. But I don't think anyone's really hoping for or expecting year one level stuff anymore. I am. <laughs> if they retooled the old raids and made it interesting to go back into, that would be great. It'd be something. And gave us maybe some, the, a simple way to do custom matches to begin with. It doesn't have to be complex. We don't have to be able to switch timers or uh, how many points or anything like that. Just a way to queue up against each other reliably and consistently. That'd be a great step forward and, and you know give us some new exotics because that's obviously going to happen. Like I'm, I'm, I want to see. I want to see what that big update's going to be because I, I don't want to like, I don't want to get my hopes up, but at the same time, I don't want to write it off as going to be ah, it's another, you know, drop in the bucket or something. Yeah. Well, uh, Paul, I don't know if yeah. you wanted to stick around for much longer, but we're getting ready to get into some of the, uh, like, talking about the weekly stuff right now. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah uh, we where can to... people go read your articles? And well, and I also, oh, yeah. I also um, wanted to talk about, like, you got a, um, you also do some stuff outside of writing articles, right? You've, mm-hmm. you've recently written a book, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, my trilogy. <laughs> uh, just finished coming out. Yeah, I did write a, a sci-fi trilogy. Uh, it's called the Earthborn Trilogy, and I just, in the past six months, uh, released all three books, and those are on Amazon. Um, the first one's called uh, The Last Exodus. Man, you should work for like, Destiny with a schedule like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've actually, uh, it's been about five years since I started the first one, so it's kind of been a long time coming, but I got to release them all kind of close together. Very but cool. um, yeah, so that's if anyone wants to check those out, just uh, they're online. But does it have awesome. does it have really good writing? Like I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. Yeah, it's pretty much on that level. So you got to kind of set your awesome. expectations. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Targeted towards the Destiny community. Well, I, I wanted to say that I appreciated you. Um, like Forbes has pushed um, out Destiny into the um, into the mainstream and. Um, we encourage you to continue to follow Destiny and be a part of it. Oh, I will. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. No problem. Thanks for coming Thanks on, man. Nice meeting you, Paul. All right. So what's next on the docket? Do we talk about Iron Banner? Do we talk about matchmaking? Do we talk about oh, uh, CEO changeovers? Everything. There's one thing I wanted to talk about because we need to talk about everything, but I noticed Imtash is being really quiet right here. What? And me? He's been quiet what? for a while. But uh, I'm just I'm just sitting here. I, I know, but I, I know why he's being quiet. I know why I've been quiet too. Your voice kind of voice kind of rough after that seven hours Dick of shoutcasting. Uh, shoutcasting. <laughs> shoutcasting. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is what's making my throat sore. Um, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I, I was I, I've been quiet the past few days because I 
my voice has been strained from all the talking constantly and trying to fill in all the gaps where you weren't really saying anything constructive. Oh, I know, dude. Oh, Same fire. thing, dude. Shots fired. Uh, you know, I, I was just like trying to, you know, talk and keep my eyes on the camera instead of looking at you because you just look. Well, I was in love. I was infatuated salesman, with man. you. I kept uh, looking at your hair and I was like, oh, man, this is way better than strikes. I kept looking over and it's like, man, this guy, <laughs> his dad just like gave him a new car dealership to run or something. He's looking good ah. for his. <laughs> so why don't you tell people in chat what you guys are talking about? Okay, so there was an event called the Red Bull Clash Corpse, and it was it's a speed running strike competition. And Red Bull, they, they had eight teams come out, and they chose the teams by holding qualifiers at colleges all over the country since, like, basically when Taken King came out. Like, uh, about two weeks after Taken King came out, they started uh, running strike qualifiers. And uh, then they ended up approaching Imtash and I saying, hey, the finals are coming up. You want to come shoutcast it? Yeah, there's actually there's actually competition. Like, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to win. Yeah. There was, you know, prizes at stake. And it got me so excited. We said yeah, it over 600 times. Um, Just like... Okay. No, the, oh, what were the prizes? Yeah. The prizes yeah. were is like $1,000, a DX Racer chair, a BenQ monitor, Astro A50 headset, a PlayStation 4, a Scuff Damn. controller. Whoa. Um, backpack. Good stuff. Yeah, Whoa, is this uh, an Astro first backpack. prize? Yeah. Yeah, that, that yeah. was that was if the team, like, if you guys won. For each and everyone got, first prize. Everyone, everyone, everyone got it. Everyone got it. Everyone in yeah, the... I, don't, I think the $1,000 was split, maybe. Right. Or maybe everyone got it, but all the other stuff, you got everyone got a chair. Everyone got a scuff. Everyone got oh uh, Astros. I should have been practicing my speed. That's a hot. So how, how, how good were these guys? I got to watch the first, I think, <laughs> hour before my wife tore me away. Well, I did some, how some regular these strikes. Guys? I did some regular strikes with a couple friends the other day. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I was, I was, I was getting my first shotgun ever, my first conspiracy theory D, <laughs> and you have to do a whole bunch of missions. And we did the Shield Brothers, and we were kind of messing around, and we we didn't do it perfectly. But I was playing with some pretty solid guys, and it took us like 14 minutes. These guys beat it in five, five, five in the final. So they they almost yeah. three wow. times. No, 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 our, no. The, our speed that up. was uh, Shield Brothers was quicker than that. I thought it was like. It, or sorry, I was on the fallen. I was on the fallen yeah. um, saber. The fallen saber, saber and it was five, five, five. And I was like, "Holy <laughs> shit! These guys did it three times faster." Man, it takes me that long to get through that initial, that initial part. drop part. <laughs> yeah, no, <it's> not <laughs> that light. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they have optimized weapons. All of them were like three twenty light. They had, um, they all had what's it, sleeper simulant and the you know better swords and were they even bringing their, their own accounts their in like importing yeah. their accounts yeah. or were they, yeah, even, they, they were even based on, on the character. strike they had like a sniper rifle that had solar burn on the shield brothers to take care of those enemies so they were prepped and ready to go wow. they, they knew what they were doing the, the, the guy like the top i want to say like the, the teams that really made it to the finals like they like everyone that went there man they practiced they they worked hard those those top four teams like they they it feels like each one did like a little bit more than the other team like getting you know you know, getting that little piece of gear that would help them out just a little bit more mm -hmm. in that situation. Um, like these guys, they they went in there and they banked everything that wasn't relevant. So if they had to switch out armor, they only had to look just one piece over to the right instead mm -hmm. of like pick the piece of armor from the from everything. Yeah, yeah. they're I saw people taking sparrows into the saber strike, which uh -huh. I never thought of doing. Like, yeah, uh, they were oh, going. Oh, those those, those guys were. Uh, they they would like do sparrows where they they used the sparrow racing league helm that allowed them to summon it like just in, instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So they would just use the grave robber sparrow or the time breaker and then just go as fast as possible to blow up instantly summon it again the second it's or, like the nanosecond it's exploded they're already yeah. back on another. Yeah, sparrow. So that they was were faster they were going than full just speed staying on a regular sparrow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's great. Somehow we were able to cast an event about speedrunning strikes for seven hours. It was <laughs> taxing for sure. It, it was taxing, but it was fun as shit. It was yeah. fun as shit. Like I honestly, the whole weekend I was just smiling, knowing I was going to do it. And then after I did it, I just I felt so like it was it was a life change. I will never forget this moment. This is literally one of the coolest experiences of my life, oh, yeah. and it was because of a video game, Destiny. And it makes me wonder, you know. Those people that got to go to that tournament and experience it and stuff, if they did have the opportunity for esports, how many people would have these cool, cool moments? And you know, we freaked out. Oh my God, the five, five, five! And and that was as exciting as this strike could possibly be. But if you looked at these 
two amazing teams that are coming down to the fifth game or the seventh game in a PvP series, and it, it comes down to one snipe or one slide shotgun, mm -hmm. this could be fucking memories that everyone in Destiny can appreciate mm -hmm. and respect and, and build off of and hype up on Twitter and YouTube and just help the game out tremendously. Competition is always exciting. It doesn't matter oh, if you're sliding yeah, rocks down an uh, ice was, alley. Yeah. <laughs> you still jump up in their seats hey, when you do it well. I, 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 <laughs> I cheer for curling every Olympics. Every Winter Olympics, I am there rooting for Yolga Ooh. to slide that rock just perfect. Brush that it, ice. It was actually Brush really, that ice good. Like. It, it was really funny because like, we, had, we had the uh, chat down on like those the computer screens below the table. So we were reading it, and like when it first started out, people were like, "LOL, Destiny PVE so competitive." Like it, it was kind of a joke at the start, but then once the brackets started filling out, once there was shit at stake, like people really fucking got into it. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Yes, yeah, so that was cool. The, they, did, you guys did a good production too. I did. You guys see my tweet? I tweeted you guys a picture of you on my TV, so you guys yeah. could see. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, saw, I saw it after. The show. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I noticed that uh, um, M Tash's shirt was uh, significantly shinier than yours. Wow. Um, because, uh, different, yeah. different, uh, different fibers. Mine was right. synthetic. Are you sure it looks uh, silk? It looks silk to me. It was, it was silky satiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cotton. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 uh, yeah. Holtzman was wearing uh, um, something that, you know like from a, a Western rodeo. Uh, it was actually from the Red Bull collection. Thank you very much because oh, stuff the shit I brought out did not look good on camera at all. So they're like, "Hey, let's just go get you a shirt from the shop and." Um, I feel like really out of shape now because I'm apparently an XXL in European men's sizes. Oh, so snap. yeah, that that felt that felt good. Um, <laughs> in, the, in the other in, thing, in, in American sizes at Walmart, you'd be a youth medium. Uh, yes. I would. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other thing that happened while we were there, Imtesh, I don't, I think you got to see this, but we like the the during the rehearsal the day before. Um, we were all just kind of, you know, bullshitting around, and we were, we're sitting there in a theater, just kind of doing whatever. And then someone's like, "Hey, let's let's put a Destiny stream up on the oh on yeah the, yeah I saw that on the theater." And it was like, "Holy shit, hell yeah!" So we all uh, like we turned uh, Real Crafty stream on. Yeah. Holy shit! I like just watching a Destiny stream in a theater setting when everyone in there is going like, "Oh shit, did you see that play?" Like it was. <laughs> It was so fucking cool. And I'm like, I'm cool. just sitting there going, that is neat. I, want, I wonder if like, I, I just went to, you know, one of the theaters here in town, like, and tried to put on an event because they do that at, at some of the theaters here. They'll, they'll host like businesses. I wonder if they'll, you know, project, you know, a Twitch stream and it's like, Hey, you want to, you want to come uh, to this event? We'll be at this theater this time watching, you know, uh, you know, this event. On the big screen, and yeah, fun way to do a meetup. That'd be a yeah, lot of fun. Yeah, yeah exactly for sure. Yeah, I think I think that'd be cool as shit to like just go go turn on some of the you know big 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 names of Destiny on Twitch, put it on a big screen TV, and have everyone just flipping the fuck out over you know. Well, over, it, it would be great to yeah, it, it would be, be great to set up a, a you know a not kind of like a LAN event where the players are yeah. right at the front of the theater playing, and then everybody's mm -hmm. sitting behind watching. I don't know. Something. Yeah, the we, one we guy was playing this, Rumble, was and possible. he got sniped a couple times. Like, the oh, yeah. one guy that was there, he was playing Rumble, and he got sniped by this one guy, like, two or three times, and everyone's like, oh, my God, like, this guy's oh, sick. Oh, yeah, because the guy's and, name was, like, uh, a fucking pleb was the yeah, name. Yeah, or something <laughs> like that. And he kept doming them. And um, to see just that reaction from that group of players, it'd be, oh, it, just, it makes me who, wish. You, I know you guys tweeted at him. Did Crafty yeah, know yeah. you guys he, he, were? We're watching. I, mean, I, I talked I, to him I, after I, and yeah, told him, to and him he after. was like, "He's like, really?" I was like, "Yeah." There's like probably like thirty of us just watching you uh, stream. And the first thing, because when I walked in, they were already watching the stream, and I kind of like walked in and kind of waved at everyone. I looked back and I was like, "You guys are watching this virgin?" Like, what are you, what are you doing? Because <laughs> that's what he always calls himself. I mean, say we're trying to do a event, like. You know, we've been challenging the Crucible Radio guys to a, hmm. you know, podcast throwdown and they keep finding reasons why they can't, you know, you know, compete against us dodging. Oh, please things. stop digging our grave. No, no, no. They, they keep, you know, I can they only keep... I can only carry so many people out of that grave. <laughs> All I'm saying is that I've been, I've said anytime, any place, the Crucible Radio guys have been saying like, oh, we can't because so-and-so's out of town and, you know, I can't because I'm scared. You know, so um, I, I just, I, I'm just trying to say like, say we were doing a tournament like that 
and I wanted to have Mtash, um, you know, shoutcast it. Um, what would he need? How would we? What would we need to be able to make that happen? Spectator mode. Mm -hmm. Spectator mode. Yep. Is that it? For sure. You have to be able to see everyone's angles, where people are moving on the map. If you're dead, switch to someone's view so you're not bored waiting for someone to yep. respawn. Um, that's that's necessary. Obviously, Call of Duty say, did it really well this year. Yeah, Call of Duty and Halo Spectator modes are fantastic this year. Yeah. It shows you, it'll even highlight the other enemy teams so you know where they are. Obviously, yeah, the other players in the game Global can't Offensive see it. has it perfectly done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It shows like where everyone is. Oh, yeah. and it's easy to move through. And people will argue, you know, Destiny is not balanced. You need to balance a game. You can't have it competitive because it isn't competitive. Even if they implemented that stuff, you could still have tournaments. There's balance in imbalance, and people are yeah. going to default to the best weapons. But you can make your own rule sets. No mm -hmm. one can use Last Word or Thorn, and you can only use legendary hand cannons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That yep. could be a rule if they really, really wanted to implement it. More importantly and, than balance, I think, it's, it's exciting to watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's oh, it's yeah. fun to watch. That's good stuff. And, and very exciting. what else can you do? You could say, you could say, all you get is the special you spawned with. No one can pick up special. You could do little things like that and and really, you know, change the rule set. And right. as long as you enforce it, you could just do little things like that. And you could make these absolutely fantastic tournaments, even though we don't have, um, you know, changeable values on people's skills or or limiting um, exotics. All you have to do is do it yourself. No one equips yeah. exotics. No one, uh, no yeah. one can use X class with certain perks. L like, mm -hmm. let's say you can't use. Um, you can't use what's it called? Tra or not transcendence? The the one that makes stormcaller last twenty six seconds long. Yeah, let's say it's yeah, something like that is nerfed for for whatever reason. I was there's, watching there's a Call of Duty uh, tournament this weekend, and they were doing something really cool where they would uh, they'd vote on what what could be protected and what what was getting taken out. So like yeah, uh, the vector is a real popular gun. Some teams would vote on protecting it. Some teams would vote saying, no, it can't be used. Uh, same with perks. And they could do that with supers, with subclasses, with all sorts of stuff. It'd be a really fun, yeah, it'd be a really it fun way to go. To and they implemented that in matchmaking. Yeah. yeah. You could go into a, there's a, there's like a ranked list mm -hmm. and then a social yeah. list. And if you go into the competitive one, they actually have that draft kind of like league of legends. If you've ever played league of legends, yeah. you can ban three champions from each team. Right. This one is just, you can ban some weapons and perks. Imagine going yeah. into it against Luminosity. You know he uses shotguns and shade step and he's very good at I'd it. What do you ban? Shotguns yeah. and shade step. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if, if you're going up against Hovi, maybe you, you ban snipers for a game. Yeah, no you know, way it, beyond. There's lots of things yeah, but do. you couldn't ban a, a whole class. Type. No, yeah, no, I know. I know for to, sure. You know, if you like ban that. No Land Beyond, Hovi's nothing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you ban Thousand Yard Stare. <laughs> if you don't have... I think you got it wrong. I think you got it wrong. I know. <laughs> I know. If you ban if you ban Thousand Yard Stare and you don't have a decent backup, like that is something, you know, you could have to actually switch to uh you, and you just don't get used to it because every gun feels different. Like if you go play with Thousand Yard Stare and then go play with a Prius Revenge, you're gonna miss shots. Yeah, it's very time, different, yeah. Every time. Yep. Uh, I, I like the ban and protect thing, but I I try to keep that like just related to maps. Um because I feel like you can you can pick a different map that will completely fuck over uh, Lu Lumi's play style, just as you can pick something over that will completely fuck over someone who's a main sniper player. Yeah. Before uh, we go same. too far, I think yeah. if we just got private matches, we'd yeah, we just got private yeah. matches. That, that opens the shit out all the doors. Awesome. Right there. there we go. Yeah. And like, for people that aren't aware of my sarcasm i crucible radio guys are not dodging us we uh we've actually been pretty <laughs> excited about um uh, doing a podcast showdown and uh streaming it right after well sometime this next week um i know tefty is wasn't That's able to I do it today on tonight yeah so we thought we team. thought we were gonna have it tonight <laughs> so i made sure mtash was here and i was gonna have to like step out or my internet was gonna cut out so you know mtash was gonna have to step in <laughs> I've got a spleen injury. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, it's gonna, it's still gonna happen. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That should be yeah, a good time. Those guys fun. are really cool over there. They put out they're an awesome, awesome show, and they're yeah, really friendly. Sure. I can't wait to do that with them. It's absolutely good. They're good guys. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, what else has been going on this week? Oh yeah, Iron Banner. Um, yes. With with actual with with a lot of changes, not just to the game type, but every day to matchmaking. Ma yeah, there have been yeah. changes going on every single day. Yeah, yeah, to the matchmaking. And what do you so, want to start with, Rift or the matchmaking? Uh, let, uh, let, let, fuck it, let's start about matchmaking. Right. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get into the people complaining about Rift later. I can't. How, how much can you talk about it? Really? I played I mean, a crap We had load. months with the old 
matchmaking in hours with the new. Yeah, I played yeah. a crap load with uh, uh, day one of Iron Banner, and I have not played day two with it yet. I'll play after the podcast. Um, I can tell you that I saw a significant difference on my end against the people that I was matchmaking against. Um, the the games were less, um, I hate to use this term, but sweaty. They were the I could see that they backed off on the skill-based matchmaking quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, the games were still, you know, they these guys weren't, like doorknobs i mean it's just like i was still playing against good players but they weren't just like ex- you know just exactly my skill level and i noticed that there was fewer laggy games like there's almost like there's latency and there's lag and it feels like when you're before i was i would shoot and it's like you would see the guy you're like how the hell did i get shot i'm around the corner right that kind of latency issue that I don't know if I'm using the right terminology or not, but when that feeling you get where you got sniped around the corner, I yeah. saw less it, of that. that latent, latency and lag, it's there you can interchange them for okay. the most part. So, and then the, 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 the other part that I saw is that I saw fewer overall lobbies that were completely laggy, maybe one or two just like God mode people in every, so there's fewer frequency of lag, um, but yeah, I, I, thought it was a, I thought it was an improvement, but there was still more room to grow. Yeah. yeah, I played seven hours yesterday of Iron Banner. Oh Usually... wow, Tefty playing Iron Banner. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That should tell. That should tell you something first. I played <laughs> seven hours of Iron Banner yesterday. Usually, when I kick it on, I'm like, okay, it's probably two hours. I'm gonna start being like, this is not for me. Uh, turns out, it is definitely. It feels different. Yeah, you know, it has a long way to go still, but it's not quite. Uh, it's not quite what it's been where every game you feel like you're getting matched across the ocean and cross hemisphere. So instead of getting matched up against people across the globe, you're getting matched up against people that are relatively within your skill level in relatively the same area. Now, this only works if you're in a team that is relatively close Mm -hmm. in in locations. Uh, Because I played uh, played with a lot of different teams yesterday and played with subs. And the it, just like Pope was saying, the the experience of lag was less like I'm getting shot around the corner, and more like um, there's just a few things that were delayed from time to time. But it felt like it switched back and forth more often, as opposed to being on the bad end of the lag side. When I switched teams with people that were definitely outside of the country, then we got some god tier lag red bars, yeah. and. I don't think there's anything that Bungie can do about that. I mean, a 200, can, 300, 500 millisecond latency, is they cannot fix that. That's impossible. I did get a little salty from time to time, but it was a lot of fun. And normally, Iron Banner, I'm like, screw Iron Banner. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing my bounties. Like Normally, I, I can't stand it. But I'm excited to play playing more of it tonight for the Zerg stream. Cool. And this matchmaking, this new system, is going to spread throughout the Crucible. Yeah. Also, I've not Thank tried God. today yet. And today is different from yesterday, supposedly. Yep. I've never gotten past level one Iron Banner. Ever? ever? Not even once. <laughs> not even in first year to go get a fellow winters. I've never gotten past level one Iron Banner. Just because I don't like 6v6. I don't, I don't find it as, as fun. So well, I, I hope that they make the Iron Banner changes to Skirmish. To, mm-hmm. to Definitely. And, and Free For All. Oh, my God. Free For All. Free For All. If you go into Free For All right now, it is Thorn. Some some snipers and shotguns, but it's it's just it's so competitive. Even myself, if I go if I was to go play five games right now, I'd maybe win one or two because it's it, there's a lot of good players in free for all right now, and it's just it seems to match you up with these these really good players, and every game is super competitive. I'd say if you yeah. wanted to improve right now and really test your skills, that would be a place to, to definitely. definitely do it. I logged in once on Tuesday. I was like, okay, let's see, how's this Iron Banner? Loaded up the lobby, saw a bunch of red bars, like. Okay, yeah, we're leaving today. We'll, we'll just we'll just wait. We'll wait we'll till wait. tomorrow. And then the first, I, I just started streaming on Wednesday, like right when I logged on. Um, ended up having Hovi, Ian, and then uh, two other guys from Celerity in the party. And so everyone was based in the U.S. And while the matches took a very long time to queue up, pretty much all of them except for two or three over the course of five hours were they were perfect like you know that's all awesome. everything everything what's was a really bar, long um, time what's what when you say a queuing a really can you give a number to that is it like over a minute about, or under a minute yes oh god over a minute um in it 
usually in the time range of about four minutes uh, oh, to queue up in a match. That's, that's a, a group very of six, long time. Right? That's with a group of six. I admittedly have not tried it going in solo yet, so I imagine that time will be much faster. Um, but it's trying to find, you know, either a. The only times that we actually had lag were when we went up a when or when we went up against a full six man team, and then it would obviously have one or two people from the U.S. and then the rest were most definitely not from the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I recorded one of the games, and it was it was horrifying. It was it was it was worse than you know previous Iron Banner lagging, but. Yeah, I mean, aside from, like, two or three games, everything was, it didn't feel like I was playing Iron Banner. Mm -hmm. We'll put it that way. You know, normally you're like, okay, yeah, you know, have tons of lag. None of it. Nice. Uh, none of it. So That's good to hear. Yeah, so overall, I think the matchmaking was a success, for the most part, and please keep improving it. With Rift being the game mode, so many people are just so set and determined to have a full team of six. Nobody oh, wants yeah. to go in there solo. I went in for two games solo on Tuesday. I was like, yeah, forget this. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is awful. I haven't tried it yet. I want to, actually. <laughs> See how it feels. How do you, like uh, you guys like Rift as Iron Banner? I'm really enjoying it. And I also wonder if part of my seven-hour experience yesterday was also the fact that it was Rift. Because... It's exciting to play something different. Yeah. And normally, yeah. I, you know, when I'm looking to just play regular Crucible, I usually don't venture into Rift. Normally, I play like Control or Free for All, something like that. Uh, so I don't know if I just haven't, you know, haven't been on the Rift train very often, and now <laughs> I'm just really having a lot of fun. Or really was that the matchmaking felt different. So I, I got a theory. I think that uh, most people's Rift experience pre Iron Banner was in those daily events. You know, just jumping in there, trying to get your 15 coins out of it. And, and getting uh, slaughtered. And getting <laughs> slaughtered, right? Because you're not communicating. You don't really even care, frankly. You know, you're just there to get your, your legendary marks. And you, you jump out and you go do the next thing. So a lot of people were really upset about Rift. But I've seen more comments, more tweets, more, more people saying, you know, I used to hate Rift, but actually... Once I formed a full team of six, it's really fun. <laughs> like I think the, well, the Red Bull event, it. the Red Bull event was was pretty damn competitive, and it was a <laughs> lot of fun because it was completely different than anything Destiny had seen. You could and win a game the, just by playing Rift smart. Exhibition. This is this is the Rift yeah. exhibition. Yeah, this yeah. is like before uh, the game was even ago. fully fully set in. But like, there was a couple games where we just we were losing, we were losing, we were losing, and then we said, you know what? Let's just stand by the Rift. Let's just hold that area down, pick it up every time, and right. our our tactics actually affected the gameplay. We're mm -hmm. in control. What are you going to do? Be like, okay, everyone at the same time push B and, and let's take it back. There's yeah. there's very limited things you can really do tactically in those games other than outslay the enemy team. But Rift was one where we full on won games because we outsmarted them. So yeah. that was it's was cool. It was very cool. Yeah. The maps have different ways of playing them. Like we got Vertigo with that portal right next to the Rift. So that, you know some teams like to take off through that portal, but. If you realize that's happening, you can just wait on the other side of that portal with a grenade and just like mm -hmm. destroy those guys as they come through. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of different tactics that are involved. It's fun how your your team kind of moves as a as a group to push that spark toward the enemy yeah. team's rift. But then it's like this mad dash back. The survivors are all trying to get back to the yeah. rift before it. <laughs> it's fun. It's a fun it's, game mode. I think that I think the community kind of turned a corner on it too. Um yeah, I can I can I, I really enjoyed it, but admittedly, I'm the type of person that if I'm going into Iron Banner, I'm going in with a full team of six because I want to win. And if you go in with a full team of six, you're probably going to win more often. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, I feel like losing a bunch of games is like wasting my time, um, even though they put in you know a lot of measures into Iron Banner to make sure that eventually when you do win a game, you know your time will still be rewarded. Mm -hmm. um, I can completely understand if a solo player um, one, if, if a person doesn't have any friends that are a solo player going into Iron Banner, I can completely understand them. Like, just absolutely rage quitting at Rift, though. Because yeah. this this game mode, like Impash said, really promotes, you know, team play right. more yeah. than any other game mode. Um, and having the consolidation of, well, if I'm going up against a bunch of six-man fire teams, I'll get mercy a bunch. You, those coins only stack to five. Yeah, you know that that only goes 
that only goes so long. I highly I recommend you get on the LFG site and find a team for this event. Yeah. Because it is fun. Once you start communicating, you know, you might actually get some friends out of it, too. That's how I meet most of the friends I have in Destiny. Is I, I jumped on an LFG site. We had a good time. So we said, I want to send friends requests, and there you go. Well, exactly. what's, what's interesting is I put in chat um, a poll. Should Rift be an Iron Banner playlist, like in the rotation for Iron Banner? And mm -hmm. we're literally like split 50 50. <laughs> I think if you put that poll up last week, I bet we would have gotten different results. Right. It'll be, it would That's be 80% true. saying no. Yeah. <laughs> the, that was a very, very strong uh, response from the community, too. Yeah. About yeah. On Reddit. Yeah. On, on Reddit. On starting Bungie to enjoy forums. it more. Yeah. What do you think about the, uh, uh, yeah. the, the, the points in it? Do you think that those are. I always thought that the. My my opinion is that uh, arming the bomb is too much. Yeah, like for your own person, like your own team's leaderboard. Yeah, like you get eh. to, it's 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 valued a lot, and uh, I I think you need to I think uh, it could like the checkpoint system could be reworked a little bit to like just picking it up gets you what like two hundred points. I, I don't remember the exact scoring, like but it's like three hundred. Um, and then like. <laughs> There's if five you die though, right there, you they get 300 also. For yeah, killing. they get they get they get 300 plus the 100 for killing you, so you get a larger um, boost it's there. A risk. Mm -hmm. It's a risk, but I, I want more emphasis placed on like actually having to make forward progress because right now, a lot of times, it's like just grab it. You know, you get one or two checkpoints, you die. Oh well, you'll eventually win through attrition at that right. point. Yeah, if you just um, continue to grab it, I, I'd like it yeah. to have less checkpoints and have them be closer to the rift to really really emphasize having to push as a team um to make that objective matter um in a different way than it currently does instead of like favoring on frontier Cirks, it's by the end of the bridge you've already got like three or four points yeah, right? pretty much yeah. pretty much you pick yeah. it up and you you make some progress and you've got half your thing filled and you you've just mm -hmm. It completely made that that rift run worth it to an extent so exactly or, yeah. or on vertigo if you, if you go in the portal don't you instantly get like three three points on it no, or something like it's, that like it's, 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 it's you have to jump across to start getting points that's one of those interesting ones oh really yeah oh, okay it, like, okay it, it doesn't it doesn't add up very quickly but it it, it spikes it up quicker once you start the jump mm -hmm. um oh, okay did um i'm curious like what do you guys think if rift for iron banner was i think personally with the maps that we have and the size of the maps i think they would be better as 4v4 oh definitely i've I would love a 4v4 in the game as is. So if Rift was that way, I would enjoy it. 3v3 uh, leaves the, some gaps. And then 4v4 the would, quicker would be, for 4v4. Yeah. yeah, 4v4 is a lot of fun. I always feel like 6v6 is too much chaos in Destiny. With all the, mount, the, the, the supers and the special ammo, and then heavy, for God's sakes. Oh, my God. 4v4 feels like, just like you said, two sparks for 3v3. 4v4, there's still some <laughs> solid, like, you can split off between two teams. You know, two people down one hallway, two people down the other side, and do some uh, interesting flanks with it. All right. Someone in chat, um, Elite Elites Junior, just corrected me, and it's uh, once you go through the portal, it gives you two immediately. So you're right, Mtash. That 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 is easy points, going straight through there. And, easy. Yeah. Can, can you imagine how fun and chaotic a King of the Hill type map would be on in Destiny oh. with supers and stuff and holding it down with bubbles and then someone coming in with a Nova bomb. Like there'd That'd be, be awesome. some really cool stuff. Um, and and it amazing. wouldn't matter the if mayhem. there were three people in there when he got the kill. <laughs> yeah, King of the Hill mayhem, stuff like that. It would be insane. And as long as these kills didn't matter other than you're getting hill time now, like you could I, I don't know. I think that stuff like that would be really good for the game and and change up um not the way that people view PvP, but it would it would feel very fresh if they added some stuff like that, like a flag yeah. a flag game. Like Rift is obviously somewhat similar, but you make the Rift that it's only getting you points if you if you dunk it or you carry it or kill the guy who's actually carrying it, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean so. that. Uh, I, it like I feel like Rift has a lot of components to it, so that's what I was thinking after I thought it through that it would maybe be interesting if you do capture the Rift that gets you some points, and then mm -hmm. dunking it is like a full point spread. Uh, and also killing a rift runner would give you points, but everything else would just it would just be resetting time essentially. You know, you right. wouldn't actually get points for deathmatch uh, points or for kills. Oh, I like that. Like and you'd control. actually have to just focus very much on how you control who who how or when gets the uh, the rift. That's right. really I I like the idea of um, of a just purely like 
objective based scoring value. Yeah. And, and well, and zone control is that right, right now, but right, it's know, the but only one rift, we have. Applying that, yeah. applying that arm that that to rift would be great. Yeah, I, I definitely think I'd like to see some improvements made to zone control as well. If they ever do that for Iron Banner, for one thing, three capture points is not enough. Or you need more capture points to make the game mode actually interesting. Mm -hmm. And like King of the set. Hill, where it moves yeah. every song. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah. like yeah, like you could have like the three capture points that are already there, and then maybe make another capture point move move around, and you have to go capture that or something. I don't know. Or just make it so there's for every map there's five capture points. Um, that would increase the dynamic, you know, tenfold in right. in zone control. Because right now it just generally turns into a Hey, let's go. Let's go. You know, flop around on B for ten <laughs> minutes until you know one team maybe has more points than the other. Every map, you already know which control points you want to control too. It's just, exactly it's always like A and C or A and B or B and C. Right. One do you of the two. That, uh, Brad, you played Halo, right? Yeah. Do you remember the the three v three v three game mode? What was it called? Oh, I don't uh, remember what it was multi -team. called. Multi team. Multi team. Yeah, multi -team. Oh, that was fun. I would 2v2. love to have like multi team, like three fire teams of three. You know, you get to take your fire team, your skirmish team, or your trials team, and put them into a map. Like, say, the problem with trials is that they keep focusing on three v three small game maps modes, right? What if they took three v three v three and make it trials and put it on on uh, first light? I what mean, if they did two versus two versus two and then called it crimson doubles? Um. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is blown. All I'm Shit. saying is that taking something like a concept like that, putting it on the larger maps, making us um, do like, you know, tribute. You know, <laughs> what was that? The Hunger Games, <laughs> um, where you have like, <laughs> like several teams. How many teams of three could you put on um, First Light? And or what's that one with the outside area with all the well, it's six shots right now, so you could put four teams. Well, that would be sick, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, man. I just. So we're talking a lot about a new game mode that we want to see right now. Yeah, yeah sorry. that's what the conversation is shifting thirsty to. Thirsty for content. Um, so we're starting, thirsty. Well, we, we can speculate on some things. Like, thirst. Like Crimson Doubles. What yeah. is it? What could it be? Imtash. Uh, I'm pretty sure what the weekly crazy. update is going to tell us this. Is week, it right? Is it the yeah, is it the yeah, we got first that, attempt we're at waiting for today? ranking doubles players? <laughs> I wonder. Okay, so in um, like in Halo Three, they did every Valentine's Day. They did like a Valentine's Day doubles playlist, and essentially the the people that won it would get like an extra armor piece or or little things. They they'd say you two as a team won the most games. Maybe they'll throw something like that in there. Because they're, they're kind of saying, like, partner up, you know, you know, really wed or be in bed with this partner and, and you know, grind it out. So maybe they're mm. going to do some sort of competition <laughs> where if you're uh, huh. having relations with your team partner and you sure. win a whole bunch of games sure. and you beat everyone else, you know, you, you've won the most games, maybe there's something in it for you. I, I have no idea. Or maybe maybe they'll just do a really boring doubles playlist with nothing special. Who knows? <laughs> At this point, I hope not. They should have. They should have announced this last year, so they had time to develop all the awesome ideas the community had. Because <laughs> the community yeah. is all over this. Like having shared health pools would be amazing. Oh that would be sick. Two v two v two would be amazing. Having up, to use man. the same loadout. Like or, or so like if many they just did stupid things this. like punch only. Like you spawn in the game and you, it doesn't even tell you, and you spawn in and it just says you can only melee. Yeah. That would yeah, be so and cool. And your oh, and your uh, guardian can only wear a wife beater. Like that's the armor for it. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, no. You know what it is? Like your grenades turn into uh, health health packs. You throw them on the ground, mm. and you get a health pack from it. Ooh, that'd be I like cool. It. I like it. Well, the community absolutely loved the idea of this event. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't think that it's gonna turn out to be. Oh, the community fantastic. loved the idea. I love challenge modes too. It's like, oh yeah, what what do we think the challenge mode will 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 entail us doing? And like there were so many cool ideas for every single challenge mode, and it's like it was not really the concept of being able to share your health, and then as a team you have more health, but you have to it inspires and commands team shooting and strategic gameplay and callouts. Man, that's that's the, good communication is the cornerstone of any relationship. So I mean, th it would have been perfect. <laughs> relationship yeah, teams with Pope. Yeah. yeah. No, not with me anymore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
So I, I so. loved I, I loved having Iron Banner as a playlist this 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 week. Mm-hmm. It's Rift Iron Banner. I think it's been awesome. Yeah, like I said, seven hours of it. I normally do not. That's that's normally awesome. the max. That's over over the maximum of what I spend for the whole week on Iron Banner. So and you did um, it in one day because you were actually enjoying yourself, which is I was great. enjoying myself. And yeah, we went up against some crazy lag at time, but. Uh, I still felt myself going, yeah, you know, this is, I'm, I'm behind this. The matchmaking does feel different. We'll see if it sticks with you next month when it goes back to control. See if exactly. you still are enjoying it. That is the question. But there was definitely less red bars. Yeah. I mean, we already talked about it a little bit earlier in the podcast, too. But was it Harold? I, I can't remember the, the old CEO's Harold, Herb, name. Herb. 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 Nelson. Herb. Herb. George. Herb. Heavy. Heavy. Oh, my God. I can't remember his name. <laughs> Pretty sure D. Snyder is the new one, and George Harrison is the old one, right? All right, there you go. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's not a hell of a lot that we can really say or talk about. We're not really connected at that that level. Yeah, right. We're not connected. Yeah, we don't know. These guys don't affect us on a day-to-day basis. They run the studio, right? Right. Yeah. So. but Pete the Parsons. game I play, which means they affect me on a day to day basis. <laughs> but we don't. True. But we don't Caught interact right with them. Pope. No, we don't interact. We don't interact with them. So they're instrumental to our happiness. But we don't know what they like. The decisions they make affect us. But for whatever reason, we got a new CEO, right? In Bungie, um, mm-hmm. Pete Parsons is a he's a players guy, and I, I and and I'm not saying that. Um, any he's other way? What's that? He's a gamer, man, and I, I know him. I know him because I've played with him a bunch um, on playing Destiny, and he's jumped in. And every time he's been in the lobby, he's like, he's just a, he's a, he's a gamer. He plays the game. He, he was. I've met him personally twice. He's a good dude. Always enthusiastic about the game and really wants the best for what I. I I've never had somebody in charge of a, you know a company like that that's asked so many questions of a person so far down and real and and made me feel important in the process and i don't know if that's just politics or but i think that that's just genuinely what the guys like and it makes me super hopeful you can smell yeah. bullshit from a mile away and this guy he's genuine man is that what i'm smelling oh jesus i mean the other thing too is <laughs> and and maybe maybe it's just coincidence i mean i'm sure Deej and cosmo and, and all of them they do have their own agenda but as you as someone said before i don't know if it was briar or teff but you know they said a ceo coming in is, is a culture change maybe Pete parsons walked in and said all right what are people complaining about communication so Deej, go talk to some people bungie retweeted more things today they retweeted one of the random things that i said today and i haven't seen them tweet out anything for like a month and a half and in the past two days I've seen Deej comment on more things and Bungie the, their Twitter handle retweet more things than I've seen in the past month so maybe mm-hmm. maybe he's coming in to stir the pot and say let's let's give them what they want let's at least at least you know show that we're there and care and talk to you know the general population kind of thing so yeah I'm hopeful I'm hopeful yeah I'm hopeful too and that's can. exactly what I'm hoping that is the effect of it, is that we get more communication because Sitting in the dark is a very lonely feeling, but it, at least we know something's coming. It's like a long car ride, <laughs> you know. Like if you have yeah. a ten-hour car ride and you never know how far along the path you are, that it can drive you m- to madness. Right. As long as you see those mile markers coming, you're like, "We're getting close, guys. We're getting close," you know. Like there's In-N-Out Burger off to the side for those of you in California. <laughs> Stop there for a little bit, you know, then keep going. Going. Didn't stop there. When no, I was in California. No, ah, Rip. That, that, that was our joke the whole time. I went to we Whataburger joke. when we had a stopover what? in Houston, but I didn't go to In and Out when I was in California for three days. Oh. Well, like the, the, one of the groups was like, "Yeah, man, we're getting ready to go," and I was like, "Ah, oh, no, I'm kind of tired." And then the next day, all the groups went out to go to go to In and Out. They during the competition when you know they got eliminated or something when they didn't have to be there anymore they went out to in and out uh, you could smell it while we're casting and we're just like yeah we're just like oh. <laughs> are you kidding me we're starving oh man <laughs> well, um I, you know, patrick brought up harold ryan so he's he's the old ceo and he's the, he's the guy who you know like it or not when you're in charge of a company if it's not doing well it's your fault 
right? You know, I, I, it's just the it's just the burden of being a, a, a the leader, and whether or not he's the guy. You know, I hold him responsible for it, and there's a lot of different reasons why things happen. There's a lot of different. You, you know, want to go there? You want to do that like crazy conspiracy theory stuff? No, I'm not going to do it. But I'm going to tell you that I, I kind of want to. It's I, fun, I'm, I'm telling you that I hold <laughs> I hold the guy in charge okay. accountable. Yeah, that's my that's my thing. That was that's, my thought. That that's my how I'm. Impression. That's how I'm been raised. And if you looked at the things that he said he was going to approach, as he said it was going to make this game better. It's a a, a small blurb. Maybe we can bring mm -hmm. that up and read that, but there honestly, wasn't a hell of a lot that like can we be clear? There's not a hell of a yeah. lot that you really said that no, you can't really go go off that a lot much. Of meat on that bone. But you yeah, know what is. though? He, he said he said what needed to be said, and which is that he's going his mission is to make the game that they said they were going to make. He starts shaking the tree, he starts rattling things around, and he starts getting things going. I really don't care. I, I want I want action. And I saw immediate action today, and if that's what if that's because of him, then fuck it, let's go. You know, if yeah. you want more content, you need a company that can provide it. Right. Right. And, and also, if, yeah, you need a unified uh, leader message. Everything, everything needs to be unified. And I think what we've been experiencing as a community from Bungie is that they feel very disorganized. And I, I know the speculation side of me says that disorganization is a direct result of leadership. Because that usually is somebody's not saying, "Hey, this is what needs to be done." So, dis, you know, uh, disorganization descends. So I feel like if he can get in there, just like you're saying, Pope, rally the team, shake it up, bring everybody together, and say, "This is the page that we need to go off of," so that everybody, you know, you don't say things like, "Oh, there's nothing changed to the matchmaking," and then two months later, guess what? We changed the matchmaking. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's a leadership problem right there. That's a communication leadership problem. Right. So. If um, if all that gets organized and funneled, and can have a clear message, and also the studio and everybody in the studio is actually working towards the same message, then it's going to be awesome. If it can't be fixed, then we're all screwed. Adios. <laughs> <laughs> the division. The it, division. It, it, it may be a circumstance of a it might be a circumstance of a bunch of different things. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I I believe that. There's a reason why, you know, companies put new people in charge when things are going bad, right? They bring a fresh new outlook on things. They can go in there. It gives consumer confidence. It picks up everything. I, I believe that Bungie's no different. We are at an all-time low. The, the, if we look at uh, Bungie players as their stockholders, right, of a company, we, are, we have very low value expectations right now in the company and just like any publicly traded company you know you replace the ceo you replace the the leadership and mm -hmm. um and and there's immediately a spike in um player confidence or, or investor confidence that this there's a there's changes happening that's not the same old thing happening and all i'm saying is that i'm not i'm not i know harold ryan was a, was a really good guy he worked himself from the very bottom of bungie to the very top and that's that's a great thing, and it, and there was a, it's a very complicated game that in a system that it may not have all been his fault, but to be yeah. honest with you, the psychology of it and running of a company, as Briar has so eloquently put it <laughs> throughout the beginning of this podcast, I don't really care what you have to do. I want what I want, and it's my job as the consumer to say I want it. <laughs> you know, I kept prodding yeah. at him, like, what do you what do you want? What do you want? Well, I want what's fun and makes this game interesting and brings people back in. And I don't give a shit what it takes for you to get it there. That's what's no, going to give not me my problem. That's not my problem. I'm yeah. going to I have money here. I want to throw it at the screen, but give me something that I'm playing. Right. I don't know. Um, satisfy me. Satisfy me. Yeah. Pleasure me. Ooh, oh, wait. Oh, never mind. Whoa. I didn't. So that. should we should we? Uh, oh, no. Should we get ready to switch here into some community questions? Ah. Uh, I know, Imtash, you, uh, you, you also have a life, and you probably need to be bailing, like <laughs> right, a, probably like right now, actually. I have to look at four different like cases for law class, and 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 break them down, and I have two hours to do it, oh, and man. it's due tonight. So I have to, yeah. I, I probably have to go because I don't. Okay. Wanna, okay. Wait a minute. Seeing you all. 
Yep. Now Later, I don't. Man. Now I don't want to go. I kind of want to just stay. All right. <laughs> Thank off. you again, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right. Go see do you your later. homework. Cool. How do I hang up? You just hit the in call button. Uh he's gone. <laughs> I'm so glad he's out of here. Oh Justin, my god. Serious kid. <laughs> god. Man, the guy wouldn't right. shut up. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what I switch over to some questions. Gabrielle Jax at I am Dirt Master. I think this guy gets a question every week. He gets really good do. questions. He does. How do you guys feel about the Sunbreakers right now? No comment. I don't play as them. I don't play as one. I'm certainly not. I, I'm not. I will say this. I'm not fearing them in the Crucible. Even when as, they're full Sunbreaker. Yeah. I, I, I have think trusty, that's a problem. Uh, well, I have a. No, I, I see if, Look, I, I, I respect them. them, but I do not fear them. I, I respect that if I don't land this sniper shot, I'm going to get fucking blown up. Um, but, okay. yeah, like, I, I know that there is power behind the Sunbreaker, but I'm also confident in my ability so I can kill them. Um, yeah, they're, they're mortal now, but in PvE, uh, I think the only reason they're even like used in PvE is for Melting Point. Uh, I just want to say that I feel like they're a lot like um, Blade Dancers right now. Like, you can take one on, but you might not live. Sunbreakers are absolutely in the worst place they've ever been, and they need uh, they need to they need to be brought back into reality. I haven't used my Sunbreaker in like I don't use it anymore. I just don't. I use had to it. use it in Iron Banner today because I was I'm trying to work on a bounty for it where I needed to get some uh, grenade kills with it. Yeah, and it was like I couldn't wait to go back to my to my Striker Titan. Mm. Couldn't wait. Is it's that not because Striker Titan is it's, so awesome? What's no, that? Sunbreakers no. are just uh -huh. broken. Because again, I don't, I don't play as, I don't play as a class. So I think I, I can't really have a reference. Sunbreakers, they were too powerful. There's no doubt about that. But now mm -hmm. they're too weak. It's like, you pop that super, you throw that hammer, and it's like it doesn't connect. You know, it, like sometimes it explodes, like when it should hit a guy and doesn't kill him, which is really super it's very annoying. Inconsistent. It, the only thing that I've enjoyed is um, I was listening to Crucible Radio and they talked about using the um, Sunbreaker's uh, shoulder charge. Like, like you don't throw hammers because you can throw a hammer, but it's a significant drop in your super um, juice. But mm -hmm. if you run into a space and you do like a – basically you can shoulder charge from a standstill and it does a rush effect and boom. And you can do I think four of those – before you use your super up, and it is. It, it, I think it's like I think it's five. Is it if five? you start, start at full, I think it's five. If you right. start full, well, usually you got to run into a space, and maybe you've got it. So uh, yeah. it uses some down over time, but it is so much fun, and I've started to utilize that. But as far as the hammers portion of it, they they have made it not fun. And um, I've stopped using it altogether. And it was, I understand, it was like one side of the spectrum. They like, here's this pendulum shift. It felt like the nerf could have been more subtle than what they did. They just went like, oh, wait, Sunbreakers, nobody likes them. They're super powerful. And then yeah. that, and it swings all the way to the other side. And it's nice that in Iron Banner, they're doing small tweaks. I feel, like, I feel like compared it. to other ranged supers, I'm at a serious disadvantage. It just doesn't feel like there's any reason to use it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Jess Branham at Draco Zero Four Warrior. What do you think of progression rewards, i.e., weapon skins for kills with a gun? So this is something that comes out of the Call of Duty world. I think is like yeah. after you get like uh, you know uh, five hundred kills with a gun, you unlock the autumn camo or something like I that. I think I think the bigger question is how do you feel about you know, weapon skins for guns, and then being one of the skins that you can get for a gun can be tied to that. I think, we like, you know, shaders should be able to be, you know, acquired for weapons. And then, sure, uh, there's actually a, in planet side, I believe it is, you can, uh, are, you can do, like, you can, R, it's called R Axiom, a, uh, a gun where you get, like, a thousand plus kills with it, and then you can turn it, like, all black or something, I don't remember. Um, but you know, same thing in Call of Duty. You can get new. You can make it gold, baby. Make that shit gold. Ooh, yeah, um, old school Call of Duty. You had to get like two hundred fifty thousand kills yeah, or something like that. It's like, it was are you awesome. serious? It was yeah, awesome. it was holy crap. It was when you super saw high. somebody with a gold gun, you're like, damn, scared. Yeah, Be scared. In, in later Call of Duties, they lowered that. But in the old school ones, man, you had to. 
Wow. Good to grind for that. Mm-hmm. And, then the, and then when they oh. added the diamond, I mean, like, when you had to get all gold of a whole class. Mm-hmm. Wow. To get diamond. Yeah, like, I, you know, uh, shooting auto rifles, you had to get, or, um, you know, submachine guns. All you have to build all of them to gold before you could get diamond unlocked. Get diamonds, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I've always uh, thought it would be great to have something that's an additional meta that is uh, to 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 reach for in the yeah. crucible and all that. Because even if you have a really bad laggy game and then suddenly you unlock a skin afterwards, it immediately wipes all that salt. You're like, ah, there's progress. Yeah. Right now, I just, you know, I don't really yeah. feel like progress. Progress went away even though you get motes of light. Right, you're going to hate kills. the dark zone in the division. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to love it. <laughs> Just I, you, I'm excited about it. I saw if you die in there, you lose everything. I'm used to it. I'm no, used I think to that's it. great. I think that's a great mechanic that they did right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm it's so used to that from Daisy or Arma or Rust. Like, oh, I, I died. And I lost everything. Okay, I don't give a shit. Uh, that's why you don't. That's why you go in in Daisy. You know, oh, you're going, you're gonna go out ganking. Okay, leave all your good shit and, and your base, and then go. Uh, get get your lean field rifle. Get a couple cans of beans to get full. Get some things of water. Okay, let's go gank. Uh, Adam yeah. Young at Adam Young three two zero nine three three one zero three. Out of all the trials maps that you have been in rotation, that have been in rotation, what are your favorites? So, what's your favorite trials map? Burning Shrine. Burning Shrine. That map uh, pisses burning. me off with that sun. Yeah. I do love me some Burning Shrine. However, Widow's Court is always delicious. Mm-hmm. When you have a good connection, wow. your sni- snipes are on point. Oh, so nice. My favorite snipe is to jump up on the truck and catch somebody floating up. Okay, if you get top spawn yeah. and they get bottom spawn, to jump up on the truck and catch somebody floating up to the uh, the church and then pop the snipe right there. That's my favorite. Oh. I would say um, since the two, those two would be on my top three, Right. Um, I think my third would be, and it's probably probably pretty controversial, I guess, but it's the other Earth map with. Um, I'm just spacing on it right now. That has the Vanderfall. Vanderfall, uh, no, Memento. No, no, no the frontier. The, the, nope. Frontier. The one with the that has the uh, uh, Excess Blue Hive uh, drop shift that or the pod that uh, crashed in the corner of it. Oh, Rusted Lands. Rusted, Rusted Lands. Lands yeah. I really like Rusted Lands, personally. I know. Okay. A lot oh, nice. of, I know a lot of people like. I. I like it because initially I hated it, and then it, and then I realized that it made me and my team play differently, and because of that, I really started to enjoy it towards the end of my trials run. Gotcha. Nice. What was the one that it's really small? It's on Earth. It's got B kind of in a building, uh, C's in a different building, and A's out in the open. It's a really small map. Exodus Is it Exodus Blue? Blue. Exodus Blue. I had a ton of fun in Exodus Blue. Blue. I thought that was a fun map. I think I was gone that weekend. Yeah, you were. Yeah. I, was, I played yeah, I with uh, Ian and Watts. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Least favorite. Fun map. Least, least favorite trials map. If we're going yeah. on ones we haven't had yet. Cathedral of Dust. Get out. Um, I hate Cauldron. Yeah, I hate that one too. Black Shield. <laughs> yep. Get I hate doors. That one too. Get doors out of all of my maps. Doors, so. doors do Shield not. Is on on sorry, on the high part of my list, and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be if the spawn split. It wouldn't be if the doors just didn't exist, but because <laughs> doors true. are there, it completely neuters any actual gameplay that you can do on that map. You know, doors you know what they need to do? There. I disagree with you. Check it out. Here's what they need to do. Instead of having doors be sensed by distance, they need to have actual buttons. So you come up, there you, go. you push the button, you either keep the door open or closed, and then there's a mechanic there where if you want to close That's that door, you got to go up and you got to push that button. And it's got to be out in relatively open, so it's like in the hall right there. Or maybe you shoot the door to open it. No, that'd be too. Oh weird. no, no! The, you can already shoot through the doors. It's always been a really fun glitch where the door stays closed on your screen, but it's open on the enemy screen. That's <laughs> yep. fun. Uh, Ash Madison at Ash WFO. <laughs> How would you uh, revamp Iron Banner? What would you guys do to Iron Banner to revamp it? Better drops. It's old. It's an old system now. You know, year one. Mo drops. Mo Step drops at the end of the match. Two. Step one is to completely rewrite the net code. <laughs> of the entire game. The entire game. Um, what would I do? I, I'm God, I'm hard to I want to say something different, but I really agree with Patrick. I mean, there needs to be more loot. Better better loot. More of it. Oh, Not I, just better, but more. 
Like, I want to see a bunch of stuff there. Like, even if it's blues that I'm deleting, I want to see more stuff. Oh, I, I love how I can, you know, there's this, there's a scout rifle and this fusion rifle that I can buy off Lord Salden and how at the very beginning of Iron Banner, they said, yeah, we want the primary way for you to gain drops and Iron Banner would be getting them from, it would be getting playing, them from the end game. Playing the game. And yeah. Are, and, not that way. and it doesn't happen. I got one hack on hatchet last time. Okay. If that's the primary way I'm supposed to get hack on hatchet and whatever the hell the other weapon was, that didn't work. Well, it doesn't it's make any, post it doesn't. On, Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead no, no, no. I, I was going to say it doesn't make any sense because, like, and I hate to say this because it's going to just come off the wrong way, but I got six of them, right? So yeah. no. why why does it's that RNG. make sense? Like, I mean, I know it's RNG, but, like, there can't be that significant of a difference. I got six of those, and I played just as much as Patrick, and he got mm -hmm. one, right? And so I saw a right. post on Reddit that kind of ex explained something that never was clear to me in that, Depending on what rank you are, it changes the pool of loot you can get. So a yeah. lot of people hit rank five and they just, I'm done, right? So they never have a chance to get some of the higher tier loot. It's true. Uh, and also, if you keep playing, like, say you're looking for something that's more common in the rank four, but you kind of skip through rank four, which is easy to do, especially later in the week. You know, like if you have those weekly bounties all saved up and you just kind of pop through you rank four from, to get to rank get, five. You go from rank two to rank five. Right. Like, so yeah. if you skip those ranks, that adjusts, that adjusts the different pools from which you are getting loot from. Mm -hmm. uh, and rank five, I think he said, was a ghost. Okay. So more time I, always, spend rank I, five. Always, <laughs> I always rank up one character first, mm -hmm. all the way up to rank five, and then I immediately switch to my other characters and I start playing them up and I can get all of them up within a day or a half day and a half and, and, and that's I feel like that's how everyone kind of plays because that's the way you're kind of forced to as well okay. there's all right. different armor for every class or there's different armor for every class that you want to go get um, <laughs> new class items stuff like that so you kind of want to play on every character you shouldn't have to grind all one particular character because that's the one that you have the highest rank on to try to get you know one of the possible rewards and you shouldn't have to finagle different ranks because they have different weights of dropping stuff either just make that shit rain at the end of a match come on it drops at like 280 anyway who gives a shit you have to yeah. infuse it up got a follow-up question from the same uh twitter user ash matheson also uh mountain dew or doritos mountain dew doritos. Doritos. both yeah being completely honest i gave up both too but if you know i'm posing the question here i'm i'll give the man an answer Doritos. Did you say both? A little of both, or did you say I gave up both? I gave up both. Well, I don't. Uh, I think I don't drink. There might one. be gluten. There might be gluten in Doritos, so I wouldn't be able to. I, I'm forced. <laughs> I would be forced to the mountain. <laughs> they dude, have gluten-free ones, do. dude. They have gluten-free. Do they? Ones. Like specific gluten-free? Let me Google it. I'm sure it's a thing. How okay. come a small bag of Doritos is much bigger than a big bag of Doritos? Why does right? it taste better? I don't know. What? How it's, is that a thing? So weird. It, it feels like the, the, cheese, the cheese concentration is like condensed into smaller packages. So then, like they use the same amount of cheese in a larger package. Like, I don't know about you, but when I eat Dorito, I, I look for which side has the most cheesy crap on, it and then put that side down oh on my, my tongue God. instead of like you know, you know, the I don't, I can't eat Doritos in the dark, is what I'm saying. Nacho at Gunner Optic, what should be the main focus for Destiny Two? Story, mechanics, PvP, PVE. Or something else. So you have to choose one thing. All right. Well, uh, it, what fuck is that. It? All of it. Yeah, all of it. That's, that's <laughs> my question. You, have to that's choose my all of it. you can't have it all. You have to choose one. He sets the rules. Uh, I did choose one for the Doritos or Mountain Dew thing. So I guess I have to choose one here. No, fuck that. All of it. No, it's like soup. You don't get to choose whether or not you're going to have a potato or some beef in the soup or like, you know, you a you, broth. Do you want potato or... leek soup? Do you want beef stew? Come it's on. Hefty, uh, no, I it's like you're talking about the ingredients of talking about the ingredients of a delicious meal. You can't just be like, I'm only gonna have some raw beef in there. You know, I'm only gonna have burritos. It's like that. Obviously, you it's haven't it. had VC. Well, everybody always asks what what makes the better sandwich, better bread or better meat. Well, if one sucks, the sandwich sucks. <laughs> so, exactly, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you're chewing okay. on the, leather. Come people on. all the time sure, in Nashville I mean. talk about 
two different burger joints, Gabby's, uh, Gabby's and the pharmacy. Like, oh my god, Gabby's has grass-fed U.S. beef and it's so good. Well, fuck that. Use, they use bunny bread buns. And while I appreciate the awesome beef, you're trashing it by putting it on this really crappy bun. Well, as the pharmacy has kind of slightly lower quite quality beef, but then they have really good brioche buns with some like kick-ass tater tots on the side and then spicy ketchup and all this other stuff. Dude, pharmacy is a better place. Just uh, I don't know what the original topic was. I, I have yeah. never been hungry. excited about a meal with tater tots. Yeah, I'm so hungry right now. I, I am really hungry right now. So, next question. Flat Nick at Flat Nick 86. What do you think of Bungie's communicative communicative approach to the last couple of days? I think we kind of answered this already. Yeah, love it's it. It's a step love in the it. right direction. Uh, Manny Munoz at Elite Infinity. Do you feel the difference in matchmaking now that it's connection based? It's not really connection based. It's just less it's a, skill based. It's, it's a sliding scale. <laughs> Adjusted. Yeah, I I know what happened. Is you know those like uh those sliding levers on mm-hmm. mixing boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is what controls the matchmaking in mm-hmm. Destiny. Oh, they have one of those okay. mm-hmm. in in mm-hmm. Bungie headquarters, and Deej spilled a Pepsi on it. Right. So we can b- blame B Deej, as we all knew. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he thought it was he thought yeah. it was the volume adjusting for his headphones. So right, it turns into yeah. a banana, and he just switched it all to skill, and he was like, oh, "It's easy shit. to get those confused." So easy, <laughs> exactly. And the only technician available to fix it wasn't going to be back until late January. So that's really what yeah, happened. He guys. just stepped out and didn't <laughs> yeah. realize what. That's happened. union labor. You can't move that slider. Yeah, right? you need representative. Yeah. There's a yeah, lockout spot, card, man. and well, yeah, you it's can't awful. do a, a you, that. If you did it yourself, you would be destroying union labor. So right, you're taking somebody's job. That's you feel good about yourself at night. <laughs> Joff at Joff and Nerrer. Some exotics were in the Taken King trailers, but months later, not in the game. Warlock helmets, boots. I was so hyped for these. Do you guys feel that this was deceptive? You're going to get it at some point. Eventually. Putting it in the Taken King trailer, but not giving it to us. Oh, with the okay. Well, I mean, technically, the Taken King is still right now, so it could still come. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to keep this drip content system alive yeah. with the game and pacing out those exotics as part of that drip content system. Yeah, I agree with that. Too, that. You know, we're an emaciated you know, patient on a, on a hospital bed and, and we're so weak that we're getting fed through a drip, a drip line, <laughs> you know, and, and bungee <laughs> content is that like, if I was drawing the cartoon bungee content would be the, the, the saline bag hanging from the, thing, yep. and the doctors are in the corner examining the, uh, the the patient that's dying and kind of making comments as to should we increase the saline or decrease it you know and is this worth is, are they worth you know resuscitating what's their next and then never mind I'm an, if I could draw that's what I would draw right now all Science. right here's one that I think the entire destiny community has been asked or has been has thought about in some way or another Jay Crespo at Jay the gamer 98 will the division give destiny the competition it needs or will it fall flat? Briar, please and please be the first one to answer this because you're you're the only one that's actually played the beta out of all of us, I believe. The two games are so different that I think the division is actually a really cool game and I really like it, but it's not a first person shooter. It doesn't have that kinetic feel that Destiny has. It doesn't scratch that same itch for me. Uh, it's a very cool game and I'm gonna really have a good time playing that over the next few months. You know, I could still play it with all my Destiny friends, which is an added plus. So I'm, I'm going to be playing with those guys, getting into the Dark Zone, having fun. But it's just, it's a completely different game. It's dissimilar, I think, in more ways than it's similar. I watched the streams, and my conclusion, not having not played it, but watching, was that it's not direct competition by any means. The competition that it does offer is essentially ga- uh, gamer time. Like, I could see a lot of people getting sucked into that world and wanted to spend a bunch of time in it, and that, those people could be Destiny players also. So there's competition in that sense of what do you spend your time on, but it doesn't look like it's going to be first-person shooter competition at all. It's not so much as like Call of Duty versus Medal of Honor. No. Uh, as, yeah. as, as much as in, I can't think of it. I, I think the real competition, yeah. like it, it comes from Destiny, for me, opened up a new way to play games, and that's like as a group. Right, mm-hmm. and as the same group over and over again, actually having friends that get together every Tuesday night or every Thursday night to do an activity. I think the division will actually be that for people too. I think okay. it it offers that, but the rest of it is completely different. <laughs> yeah. Um, SJB at slash Steven 
at I'm SJB. Do you feel Iron Banner is still fun and worth the grind? I think we've kind of covered this already. Has because... anybody earned uh, Scout Rifle yet? And we've been playing with that. Yep. I got killed by it a couple Indeed. times today. That's about it. It's, it's I've heard really good things about it. It's powerful for the. I I, I was playing with um, Pwn Star, and mm-hmm. he was mm-hmm. trying to get um, clips for it, and it was very difficult for him to use it in like a PvP close quarters map. But when he was using it on larger maps, it hits hard. It's very unforgiving if you miss your shots. Mm-hmm. And uh, but, Straight Rabbit. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, Jade Rabbit uh, Archetype. That'd be right? a really good example of it. Yep. Yeah, so if you like Jade with, Rabbit, but you still want to use it. An exotic in that slot. It might doesn't in. does one of them actually have a little bit more impact? Also, I thought somebody mentioned. I don't remember why, but I'm not really playing Iron Banner for the rewards uh, because ultimately I end up using a, a last word thousand yard stare. Mm. They, they both have sixty one impact. Oh, okay. What about aggressive ballistics? Is there does that exist? No, on that does not have. That's not on Jade Rabbit. Okay. So, so it's it's it's, it's definitely incorrect. interesting. It's one that I want to get. The one that is being sold is pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely want to see what kind of rolls I start getting now that I've hit ranked four, and I and it will start to be able to be dropped. I've uh, I, uh, up until rank three, I keep getting pants. Do you guys keep getting pants? Yeah, I would get. That's all I've been I got. Getting. I think I got one pair of pants thus I'm far. Sitting on like that's six boots. I've got. I'm sitting on six pair of, of like. Boots. That's what you mean, actually. I'm yeah, bad. boots. I'm sorry. <laughs> pants, boots. I was like pants. No, I keep getting these. I keep getting like pants all the time, and I've got I'm on my, my like six pair of trousers. Guards trousers. walking around. Trousers. Trousers. <laughs> you know, boots. The boots with the fur. Yeah. Uh, the I, Iron Lord trousers. <laughs> decent rolls on them too, but uh, I bet your guardian wears socks with those sandals too. <laughs> <laughs> so nice one question. of the things with Iron Banner <laughs> that occurred to me, I think, with. House of Wolves is, okay, I've earned all this gear twice, and I'm going to earn it for the third time. <sighs> yep. <laughs> so I pretty much just go after the weapons. I don't care about that. And it's only I will only go after the weapons if it's a really interesting role. If it's not a good role, I don't bother. I'll just play with Iron Banner for fun with my friends. But I don't go after the armor at all. McD, the real one, at Clank Player, was personally expecting to hate Iron Banner Rift, but now I kind of like it. That's all. Just a nice comment. Sentiment. That's not a. Yeah. That's not a question, Briar. Hey, <laughs> I, I I liked it, so I put so, it in there. Yeah. <laughs> I feel we like did Briar give him that power. <laughs> we did give him that power when choosing the questions. Yeah. Matt at Matt Ryder nine seventy one. Would you rather have fun or join the meta in Crucible? I I I don't actively try to avoid the meta as much as possible. I am aware of it, but most of the time, yes, I am trying to have fun. And if me having fun happens to be going along with the meta, then so be it. Like right now, I'm using a last word sniper, and right. I'm enjoying myself using that loadout. Mm-hmm. When I was using the Hawkstall, I was enjoying it. Because I enjoyed the, the basic feel of the first-person shooter in the game. So right. uh, as, long as, as long as I'm getting decent connections, I enjoy it. When I get awful red bars, then I don't want to play the game. When I, when I play Crucible during the week, I pretty much actively avoid it because I'm literally trying to get more interesting combinations of weapons you know maybe i'll i'll throw a fusion rifle into the mix or i do some of that too you know uh you know i just i I like to throw new interesting weapons into the mix and if it comes out as a good gameplay great it makes for a great youtube video you know like it just Mm -hmm. those two things really work for me um but when i'm trying hard when i'm trying to go to the lighthouse when i'm in the iron banner and like it's you know we're we're getting sweaty. Mm-hmm. I'm all in the mat. I'm all about the meta. Is yeah. any of that not fun for you? When Thorn was the meta, it was less fun. I feel the meta. Dirty. To I me, feel the dirty. meta has come yeah. to me. Yeah. The the Mita multi tool is Thank you. the gun I always liked. <laughs> so it's it nice that it's in the meta. I can you know? totally agree, Briar. Shotguns getting pushed back. <laughs> that. That was the meta that I wanted. It just kind of fits into my meta, you know. So yeah, the meta they has they really get pushed back. Too. The shotguns really get pushed back. They did I think everything they did. but yeah. the the fell winter's archetype. They, they they nerfed the rest of them, but that one still. But there wasn't really good. another shotgun that people used. No, the matador well, the part- and now the the conspiracy getting the D. Jerry <laughs> at Japa twenty three, will Pope RNG ever be patched, or will RNG Jesus forever be on his side? 
Um, I keep tweeting at uh, Patrick throughout the week, and he stopped responding to my tweets. So um, I'm treating you the same way I treat trolls. <laughs> oh. I just don't pay attention to you, and oh, maybe okay. you'll go away. <laughs> no, I won't. I, I tweet at him every time I get a thousand yard stare. I take a screenshot of him and I uh, of it, and I tag him in the screenshot. And, and I'm um, over here every single stream trying to farm legendary marks, trying to <laughs> buy an engram at the end of every single stream, every single day, and then making a big deal out of it, and then just, <laughs> you know, having to log off in complete sadness as I see another long far gone with, like, Gotta exude. help roll on that Havoc pigeon, though. I actually yeah. did get a Havoc pigeon today <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, with Rangefinder. Uh, I was like, oh, hell yeah, Rangefinder. Oh, motion tracker. <laughs> okay, that's... Okay. Yeah, I, I, my goal Maybe is one to, of the other. Oh no! no my no, goal no, is okay. to fill up my entire special um, slot with a uh, um, with a thousand yard stairs, and then tweet that picture to Patrick. That's my goal. I'll have it next week. Oh my It'll God. be good. <laughs> next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This that's thing for is questions, but I got one more comment from L L Moco at L Moco. Great job on the latest podcast. You guys took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, I man. thought we all deserve oh, a that's nice. Pat yeah. on the back. <laughs> Every once in a while, it's nice to see a nice comment. I figured I'd read it out loud. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And and I, and, I, and to lead on to that, I think the community's reaction as a whole, I think we all need to, you know, some more constructive than others, people reaching out there, but everybody had, a, a, you know, raised up their voices and we were heard and Bungie responded. And so um, I don't think the work is done by any means. Um, you know, we must uh, remain vigilant on the watch, on the wall, you know, forever to to, to watch the wall and keep. Oh my God! It just feels like we. And, uh, and I feel like it. we're about to go fight for civil rights or something. I know. <laughs> I'm, I was about to. I was. I was. In, I was. I was Christ. envisioning. Uh, um, what's that? The crows. The crows. Thank you. Which ties into destiny. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So. 55th. Uh, uh, I'm just going to say it's the right, and if not, then Ryan can have fun editing. It's that right, makes... now. It right now. Right now it is. <laughs> if this one, the right now if this one is wrong, it's not wrong. Every right. other one before this was wrong. Yes. This one's true. Right. It's true. <laughs> this, this one, one is right. correct. <laughs> it's true. There was an unreleased podcast that we filmed at the very start just in case this happened. Or number one was actually number zero. It was like a beta podcast, depending on which way yeah. we messed it up. Truth and relativity. <laughs> Reconciliation. Truth and reconciliation. Gotta yeah. get that haloed. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in to the 55th Plan of Destiny podcast. You know where you can find me. PlanDestiny.com or on Twitch at Plan of Destiny or Holtzman, one of those channels. I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find me at the Briar Rabbit on Twitter or on my YouTube channel, uh, which is uh, something with Briar Rabbit in it or uh, streaming for Plan Destiny. I'm uh, Teft to Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. Uh, you can catch the streams I do for Planet Destiny, twitch.tv forward slash planet underscore destiny. Not the Planet Destiny one, because there's another one out there that is not real. Mm -hmm. Planet uh, underscore destiny is the right one, right? Yeah, yes. Planet underscore destiny is the right one. And also my own personal Twitch streams, twitch.tv forward slash tefty teft. -teft.